All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Speedruns from the Crypt, your bi-weekly horror hotfix on GDQ. I'm your host, Dicus, and we're going to have a wonderful uh, array of games for you tonight. Uh, we're diving into the world of holiday horror. Uh, before we get into that, though, I just want to say that AGDQ 2023 Online is coming up from January 8th to the 15th. Uh, prize submissions are currently open from now until December 30th, so if you'd like to participate in that, feel free to go to gamesdonequick.com for more information. All right, so it's the holidays. Uh, we're approaching Christmas. Uh, it's currently Hanukkah. Uh, we have a, a fun, it's always a fun time of the season. So uh, one of the things I love doing is getting festive. I uh, hope you're all having good times right now. And surprisingly enough, horror and holidays mix surprisingly well. There are more horror holiday games than you would think. Uh, starting off things for the night, we're going to be hopping into a long game and also one of my personal favorites. We're going to be doing Parasite Eve. Uh, this is a very fun run, but it's long, but it's actually had some interesting changes in the past, I think, like, a year or so. So, it should be fun to kind of see how the game has evolved, uh, I guess just over time. Anyway, here is Parasite Eve featuring RJ's Mangit. Take it away. Hello, everybody. I'm RJ. I'll be dressed as Santa all night for you while we run this very festive Christmas game. I'm happy to introduce my two commentators. I have Chris Naga and B. How about you introduce yourselves? Chris, do you want to go first? <laughs> Not all at once. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Chris. I uh, I run this game as well. Um, not, I guess not. I haven't ran it in a while, but you know, I'm getting the itch. So here we are. <laughs> My name is B. Uh, I go by Eyes on B. I used to run this game like six years ago. Uh, instead, now I just kind of run it every Christmas, uh, just kind of to have a safe space for people to go on Christmas when they're lonely. Super nice. A big fans of Parasite Eve here. Why don't we just get right into it? Because we do have a lot of kind of exposition to start the game right away. So I'll give us a three count and then we'll go. Uh, three, two, one, go. And we're off. This is every uh, speedrunner's favorite part of the game. Yep. <laughs> nope. This is when you go pee really quick when you have to reset. <laughs> this is not what comes after, like, in the next minute or so. What is oh. everyone's favorite part. That's yeah. true. When I think this part. Go ahead, Arjun. Go ahead, Chris. No, I was gonna say this is <laughs> this is the this is the shame part where you just realize that you reset another run on like day three <laughs> or four, and you're like, okay, this sucks, but I gotta prep myself, mind, body, and soul to for another roll, run, you know. And then you realize the opera's coming on, and you're like, great. And then you know you you resume. I don't know about you, but I love opera. <laughs> I'm indifferent. I'd go see one, but I think I'd be wary after what happens in this. True. Yeah. Movie yeah. Uh, theaters and other gatherings definitely wig me out because of this game a little bit. Like um, last year, I think in the beginning or actually it was this year, very early this year, uh, there was a Final Fantasy concert at Carnegie Hall. And I was like, it would be the dream to go to that, but also I would not stop thinking about this. <laughs> All right, quick name change. Oh, wait, what button? There we go. I can spell. Don't worry. I can spell my own name. Santa. Santa Brea. <laughs> Santa Brea. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, so now we're actually getting control, but we don't get to do it for very long. But the first thing we're going to do is change our weapon to the club. Uh, we will get into that a little bit later. But first, another cutscene. But this one's far more entertaining. Some might say it's even fire. <laughs> Channeling oh my, my inner God. Chris Naga. <laughs> yeah, that was a very Chris joke. I'm so <laughs> mad because I was literally about I to say no. that. <laughs> Did you say it's a hot performance? Oh. It is a hot performance. The hottest. 
Everyone's talking about it. You see, I have to understand. Right now, we're laughing and give it like, I don't know, the minute or two that this takes. And uh, Twitch chat will start groaning. They're going to understand why we're saying this. Actually, a lot of them already know because a lot of them watch Parasite Eve speedruns. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's why it's great, you know. Everybody is just like slamming their heads like the jokes. Let it stop. But no, <laughs> they will continue. All right, though, we do have a lot of time while this happens, and I always like to ask this question every time I run this game because I like to rile things up. So, chat, tell me, this game's a Christmas game. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Let's hear it. Everyone weigh in. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, by the no way, contest. I'll just tell you right now, it's an easy answer. All right, a, a Christmas movie requires the movie to happen around Christmas. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I, in terms of actually watching Die Hard, I don't think I've ever watched it for Christmas, but I could acknowledge it is mm. for Christmas because, well, hey, look, it, the movie doesn't happen unless it's the Christmas party. That's why they attack during that time, because they need everyone, you know, Christmassy and drunk. That's true. So I, for a long time, was very adamant that it was not a Christmas movie, but I had somebody present a very compelling argument that I could not uh, refute in my own. And they said, if the movie has like lines and scenes that are directly affected by the fact that it is Christmas, then it is a Christmas movie. And in Die Hard, there are plenty of times where they say things like Christmassy to the in the sense of what's going on and that they wouldn't say any other if the movie was in like july they wouldn't be they would be saying like fourth of july quips so i couldn't really refute that that's fair here so, we go there's the lady from shark tank yep oh no the play's on fire i can't believe it this is my favorite thing to catch new people <laughs> when they're playing this game is how they react to the scene this because is, it is really opera. extra. It, it's like, it starts out so I don't want to say hot. I don't want to say it, but I almost did. <laughs> you wanted to. I, this yeah, this no. is the part where things really heat up. Oh. It really ignites the game's <laughs> opening. Oh, man. Be yes. immediately regretting being here. No, I'm not <laughs> regretting it. So conveniently enough, just for Aya to do a little bit of flexing early on, her date is the only person who survived for some reason, just to get shoved out of the way. Ooh, black and he's, card. We think he still Beautiful. lives, too, as far I as... I have a theory on that, but I don't want to say it here. I want to know. Go DM me or something. I want to know. I will. So we got our first uh, fight with Eve, or Melissa Pierce, I guess. This is when she first finds out that it's, she calls herself Eve. Uh, oh, and you notice we'll, we have switched to the club. Ooh, a crit. Uh, the club, we use it in the beginning for a couple of reasons. One is its ATV is quick, it doesn't waste ammo, and it do does about just as much damage as the gun would do anyway. So there's really no downsides to using it over the gun. Can I get one more crit? No, I can't. Well, maybe. Nope. The game teased me with a crit. Wow. So that was six hits right there, right? Yeah, which is the worst the it can be. Yeah, but we're talking normally about God from a four tier. hit. Yeah, go yeah. Ahead. No, I was just going to say God tier is, is all crits, which is just four tens, which would be great. I think it barely happens. I don't know if it even happened. I think it happened once with Palmer. Um, it's happened the, a the couple best of times, but it's super, has it? uh, super rare. I have had it, but the run died immediately. Like, yeah, uh, that's, yeah, it's one of those things. If it happens, prepare for a reset. That's all I'm oh, saying. But, it's the same with the rat crit. You have like the two hit rat crit or whatever. That one always ends up dead for me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Right now as well, while we are talking about the rat coming up, uh, now that we're in the game, I just want to mention, uh, for people who newer Paris and Eve, maybe you don't know what this game is, uh, this is one of the only, like, there's a few, there's there's definitely a few, but this is definitely one of the more prominent horror RPGs. Um, it has a very unique battle system um, that they're all going to talk about in a moment here, but it's just sort of interesting to have a game that is a horror RPG. Uh, it's a blend of games that you don't see quite often, so. My favorite genre that barely exists. True. Or yeah, 
there is Kadelka. Kadelka, uh this one uh, a new game called the withering rooms uh, kind of is a horror RPG um, there's definitely a few but it is rare I have You're not square. played the Kudelka or Shadow Hearts games. Beautiful. I've only played beautiful game. Kudelka. They're on my this list. This is a Everybody's Square infinite Enix. List. This is Square Enix's tribute to Pokemon. Just to <laughs> let you know. It's Rattata. Is Rattata is evolving. It's Pikachu! <laughs> and as you can see, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. That is going to be the other joke you hear about 75 times tonight. So just wanted to start it off. Get one in early. So one of the things we look for is where the rat goes first. Kind of just stood there. 18! Yeah! Ooh. Look at that. Ooh. Oh, called my shot. <laughs> so yeah, that could, like B said, that could either take one or two hits. 18 uh, being a crit will be a one shot. Uh, or it'll do 12 damage, which will end up being a two shot. But we got the 18. We're blessed. The game's like, I can't give Santa Claus bad RNG, so I'm not gonna. You can expect this all night. You're gonna get the M10. <laughs> oh, yeah, we can. Uh, I don't know if we have a ch uh, channel point bet for that, but uh, very common in Paris Eve running will happen mm -hmm. later. Uh, there's a gambling on what a good gun and a bad gun is. Realistically, I think they're more equalized these days for the speedrun, but uh, normally getting a gun called the Micro Uzi later will be good. Uh, that's going to come way later, but maybe we, we can ask about having channel point betting for that. Yeah, that, that happens about an hour and 20 minutes into the game. Or I think my run. favorite part of running this game would be that it doesn't have... It, it has just enough rng to uh, to the run right so like there there is a lot of things that are you know solid um but you have you have your um some of your pickups can be you know either plus ones or plus twos which we will see later on in the sewers um certain tools on day two could be there or you can get slapped with an ammo plus 20 um, but yeah, the, the big one is the 50-50 shot with the M10 or the Micro Z in day four, which is pretty good. Pretty yeah, and in the new route that we'll get into a little more detailed when the changes start happening, uh, the M10 is still about slower by about a minute to 90 seconds, they think. We're not 100% sure. This is when I go, back in my day, if you got an M10, <laughs> it was done. You reset. There was no... It didn't happen anymore at that point. So it's been it's really cool recovery. to see how people have figured out ways to reroute it. And then at one point, it was the world record, mm -hmm. right? Well, well, technically, the M10 is still the world record right now. No. Oh, well, there we go. And the M10's actually been the last five or six world records. Right now, real quick as well, uh, this boss fight's pretty straightforward. One of the harder boss fights, really enough, because you might be resetting here if you just get uh, unlucky movements, but... Uh, she'll move around the arena. She's going to be shooting green lasers. Um, you're just going to kind of hit her with the nightstick because right now we want to conserve the ammo. Um, crits are obviously good, and that was a really good fight by RJ. Yeah, but you missed, I missed once because I, I like to go for the first hit, and sometimes she will sit there and just let it happen, or other times she moves around a lot. We did get a lot of crits, so it was overall pretty slow, but we only missed one time, so decent fight all around. Golf clap. <laughs> it's weird i ran this game a bit oh good <laughs> sorry no go ahead i was gonna say how it's weird how like difficult the early game can be in this game because there's mm -hmm. some of the easiest fights but just not having the resources you get later like i know one of the common run killers is really the second fight coming up if you're not careful yes it's it definitely can be awkward. that frog's a pain yeah. The are you talking about the frog with yeah, the two, two rats, rats and a frog? Yeah, yeah. Like these uh, rats are pretty frog. straightforward. Uh, they're barely oh. chipping away at health, and they do hit. Um, they have their fire attack, and they all die one shot at this point because Arda's been powered up. Um, ah! However, uh, the next fight can be a bit risky just because we're gonna have our first frog enemy, a new enemy. Also, I like to believe this is just an average New York sewer. There's these rats like are just always <laughs> down here. Like they're they're not mitochondria based. They're just they're just these are the rats. You think the frogs are down here too? Yeah, absolutely. 
<laughs> I mean, I've never been so, to New York, but this is what I imagine it's like. Also, props to Aya. She went on a date in an opera, and her first instinct is to jump in the sewer. Yep. I mean, I've partied in a sewer too in my time, but I mean, I wasn't wearing an opera dress, yeah. so I mean. Next time. Uh, okay, good. I thought it was getting away from me. <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah. Contact damage. It was a beautiful crit. Good fight. I like frogs, but these are the only frogs I don't like in anything. I do not like these frogs. Just so so coming up here, coming up here is where um, the first like RNG box is what I was talking about earlier. Um, this box that RJ is going to grab. Let me wait. Yeah, this could be either a plus one offense or plus two. Before, it was one of those things where if you got a plus two, you just automatically went for um, the boss fight. But now with the new route, we go ahead and grab this next one regardless. So we can go ahead and kind of beef up the uh, beef up the attack stat on our gun. Also, and we got one plus two, plus two which good. is pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So that means something for us early in day two. I'm going to try and listen here. Actually, I might just do this the slow way and be safe. I get so anxious about Frog Skip because... Um, oh, thank God. <laughs> it's, it's probably the most amazing thing about this that has been found recently. It's like maybe a year and a half that it's been around. But uh, Parasite Eve works in a really interesting way because uh, you can't really run away. There's an option to run away. A lot of the fights are placed in certain spots so this is like the first mm -hmm. major skip and you have to like touch the wall and stuff yeah and if you don't you gotta fight two frogs which sucks weirdly yep. enough by the way that if, that if that didn't look like it worked no that was perfectly done uh we skipped the whole frog fight um as was mentioned so good frog skip yeah and usually there's a nice little line like you can take uh where you can just kind of like diagonal straight up into it but i do it based on a sound cue and I cannot hear the game that well right now. I can hear it like good enough, but not enough for these cues. So I just did it the more safe way of making sure I wedged myself into the corner next to that column before going left. Here we go, more average New York sewer animals. I, you know what? This entire game is just your typical day in New York. I live in Philadelphia. <laughs> I've been to New York quite a bit. And I can honestly say that this happens every time you go. Could you imagine Parasite Eve if it took place in Philadelphia, though? Because I think it'd be kind of wild. Would it be that different? Yes. The people I'm are gonna wild. I'm going to keep my comments. I'm going to keep my comments <laughs> yeah. on this. So me, RJ, and Chris are all from that area specifically. So I don't know. I think people would be really tough about it compared to New York. Uh so uh, right now we have the gator fight. Uh, this is a two-phase fight. Uh, RJ is going to make sure to shoot the tail. Uh, interesting. Oh, that was a bit rough. Um, mm -hmm. Interesting thing here. Crits are actually bad in phase one. Um, playing it safe, RJ will be healing. Each one of these green waves is like a good 20-something health. I could uh, actually one-shot you too. Uh, there's RNG that can happen where the gator can hit you with every wave at once. Um, this is going to be slightly awkward because we haven't talked about this yet, but you can see that it ended on a two shot and not a full round of ammo. Uh, the reason why that's going to be important is because as the gun works, it fires in bursts of three and you have a six bullet chamber. So, um, every time you're on zero or six, that's good because if you're on no ammo, the game will automatically give you a full reload. Uh, if you run out of ammo while firing though, I will have to reload. Three crits in a row is pretty good right there. That's pretty good, yeah. yeah. Uh, phase two of the fight's a lot easier, weirdly enough, so we'll just kind of do this one attack where he decides to fire the same fire three times in a row. Uh, there was a bad attack, uh, I think it's more placement based though, where he can kind of just pause and then try to run up and slap you, that does a lot of damage, but phase two is normally a bit easier. Uh, oh no. Especially with a lot of these crits. Okay. There we go. <laughs> she reloaded again and it scared Great me. Great fight and good day one. <laughs> yeah, that fight was a little scared. Normally we... Honestly, I'm playing it safe because it looked like I still had a decent amount of health after getting hit once, mm -hmm. but most of the crits that the gator can do are in the 30s, so I was oh, yeah. not going to chance it. And even the the regular shockwave, there's some weird instance where if you get hit with one of the green shockwaves, you can actually get hit by it twice for like 40-something <laughs> damage. And there's just Oh, you ever been uh, do, so. hit by like all of them at once? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I love when that happens. It's so rare, death. but... Uh, uh, for Twitch chat, there is an example in that fight where you can see the, the green waves kind of coming out, like, you know, in an arc. Um, 
if you're just in a bad position, all of the waves will hit you at once and it's an immediate death. It's that early and you just yep. die. And it's one of those things that you know it's coming and you know you're screwed and there's nothing you can do about it. There's a lot of moments like that in this run where it just happens and you're going to let it happen. Yeah. This is one of my favorite bits in the game. It makes no sense if you've ever been in a city that they're just speeding through New York <laughs> in a straight line. Yeah, Daniel's driving at like Mach 10. Yeah. By the way, the, the reason why this game gets explained for this is because I think they mention a line like, oh, it's Christmas, nobody's in the city. <laughs> Which, yep. I don't know if that's accurate. No, it's not. It's honestly yeah. the only part of the game that's not realistic. Everything else is, but not that. Oh, yes. Like the... that boat, super real. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I got, I got Chris. I got him. <laughs> yeah, you, you got me. You got me. <laughs> By the way, in case anyone's wondering, if you're wondering, what's this game about? Why is this happening? Just fill in the word mitochondria, uh, and that yeah, will explain yeah. everything. But you talked about this earlier. Any weird stuff in this game, mitochondria. That's why the city's mm -hmm. empty. But mitochondria. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why is he going Mach Ten mitochondria? Like that's just that's yeah, the yeah. only yeah. thing that you. There's no traffic. Use. Apparently. Unbelievable. All right, so we're starting up on day two. Uh, day two is really, really, really text heavy. Um, <clears throat> so there's going to be a lot of mashing for the next, what, two, three minutes um, before we actually <laughs> uh, go ahead. Yeah. Pro I, 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 well, well yeah. I was about was the, some, like the some reprieve. Minutes. Yeah, some reprieve in between. But I guess, well, yeah. Regardless, there's a lot of mashing through text in the beginning portion of uh, this day. It feels like every time you have to talk to Baker, there's some weird, like, you have to mash a bunch and then pause, and then he'll, like, sometimes call your attention. And you have to, I don't know, it's always been really strange to me. It is It is typically, like, a weird interaction. Because, like, you'll walk in the room and have to say something before you can walk to him. Or he'll mm. give you something... Yep. Or he, like, answers a phone. It's always weird with him. There's a really Here's fun two. thing about this, uh, these two gun guys, uh, Wayne and Torres. There's a cameo in, of all places, Final Fantasy IX, a synthesis shop in Lindblom. Um, they're both named after these characters. And this is kind of, in a, in a sense, a synthesis gun shop. So there's a fun fact. Yeah, it's kind of like how the upgrade system of this game works. It's like uh, just a bunch of synthesizing and com combining of things to build weapons that you want to use throughout the run. We obviously have a very set path that we'll take now, and um, we'll get into that. But So it is very similar. So that's neat. I actually didn't know that. I discovered it maybe three years ago when I just happened to go talk, because there's one in the back that you can talk to optionally. So the main guy, I think, is named Torres. And then when you go to the back, his name is Wayne. And I just had a moment where I was like, wait a second. They did it. There's a Parasite Eve reference. Um, they do yeah. remember. <laughs> yeah. Really quick, um, as RPG um, gaming, a lot of RPG speedrunning, you tend to have uh, the classic inventory management. Um, some items are kind of just, hey, you can't remove this, it's a major item. So uh, RJ just took a moment to drop a, a few items there in storage. Uh, it was the, I think like uh, just the things he got in the opera that he doesn't need anymore and the mod permit. Um, the items aren't just gonna waste some space. We need all the inventory we can. So just quick removals of those are really good. Yeah, and inventory is something you can, you can use the upgrade points in this game to upgrade a few things. Inventory, ATB, gun damage, gun capacity, but we uh, don't do anything with the inventory. So we, like Dice said, we want to make sure we really keep it clean. Somebody actually mentioned this in chat just now, but another fun fact about this game was that it was the test uh, engine for the uh, for Final Fantasy VIII. So you'll notice the character models have a similar body. So the long leg, short torso. Came out like a yeah. year before, I think. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Almost all of the characters are 60% legs. 
I have Brea is it, the trippy fact about her is while she's all legs, uh, canonically apparently she's like five three or something, or like five five. Oh wow! But you think like with like because you look at her legs, like you imagine she's really tall, but no, she's like five five apparently. This also part's kind of funny the, um, story oh, wise. Sorry, yeah, this part's kind of funny story wise, just because Baker is like, "We're about to go to this conference. You don't say anything," and then he goes and he starts lying about the incident, basically. And they're like, one of the reporters is like, "I'm talking to her," and then Aya just spills the truth, and everyone loses it. Now he's slapping his desk like the thumb that he is. Uh, but what I was gonna say though is, uh, since we mentioned this being a FF8 uh, tech demo. Uh, a lot of games would do that to test out the engines, and Parasite Eve, I think, was just a fun one, because it's like, hey, there's a really interesting... Because, believe it or not, this is actually a licensed game. This is, like, based on a book. Yep. So they just thought, like, hey, this would be a cool idea, and then it turned into a really unique game that ended up getting, uh... Let's say a couple of sequels. Let let's go <laughs> Let's go with that, but we're, we're not going to get fully into that. Um... <laughs> It gets weird because uh, each game that has come out that's tied to the Parasite Eve name is so drastically different. Like this one is a, a horror RPG that has some survival horror elements, but it's mostly an RPG where PE2 feels more like a survival horror game with some RPG elements. And then I don't even know how to describe Third Birthday. So I think it's they just kind different. of um, they went along with the trends of gaming at the time. Uh, this game was just kind of more, you know, hey, we have this idea, let's go with it. And it was mentioned in Twitch earlier and as well, uh, a lot of us here know, um, this game is very similar to another RPG called Vagrant Story, where it has that ETB system that wasn't really, I don't think any other really games use this thing until like, I guess in the modern age, where you're much more actively moving in a battlefield as opposed to the traditional turn-based RPGs. Um, yep. Parasite Eve 2, uh, the trend of the time, uh, especially when it came out, because really now, Parasite Eve 1, uh, for horror fans, this game is not an RE clone. Uh, a lot of people use the phrase RE clone because in 1996, Resident Evil would come out and obviously it would take the world of horror by storm, but Parasite Eve re weirdly wasn't a copy of that at all. This game doesn't play anything like Resident Evil. Uh, Parasite Eve 2, though, wanted to ride the wave of popularity with, hey, it's a horror game, Resident Evil's big, let's do that. Um, yeah, they, and I think it lost its in, charm. They actually brought in people from Resident Evil 2, and that's why it does have that feel. Yep. But that's where it gets a little bit, I wouldn't say controversial, but there is definitely a split. I feel like there's a lot of people who prefer this game, and then there's a lot of people who prefer PE2. And then most people try to pretend that third birthday doesn't exist i don't <laughs> necessarily think it's a bad game it's just kind of a weird victim to licensing issues um shortly after parasite eve 2 came out since as you mentioned this is a novel and movie first um this this is a fresh story where essentially the novel and movie are a prequel of sorts that are kind of it's kind of mentioned in the plot as the japanese incident in a way um the author is uh he's a microbiologist and as absurd as the story is he really wanted to kind of keep things along the lines of reality and uh I don't think he liked where PE2 went, so Square lost the, the rights to it, and that's why it's called The Third Birthday versus Parasite Eve 3. The Third Birthday is also just kind of an unfortunate situation because uh, going into it, I, you know, since they lost the rights and The Third Birthday, a lot of people probably never even played it. Uh, you may have caught it in a random Twitch stream these days because, you know, more people have been being able to showcase it. But with a third birthday, they can't use the mitochondria plot points. So the whole thing is about like, oh, here's overdive. And it gets really <laughs> convoluted with the way they win. It's like time travel, uh, body swapping, and just the only thing really the same is Ayabrea in the game and a few other characters that are mm -hmm. from Parasite Eve 2, weirdly enough. Yep. And they can do whatever they want with Aya right now because she was original property. She wasn't from the novel, the movie, or anything like that. So a lot of people who will go back and they'll like read or watch it, they'll be like, where's Aya? She's she's a square original creation, essentially. 
And then, I feel like this isn't even exclusive to the third birthday, um, just because I don't think a lot of people actually played the game. The gameplay itself isn't that bad. Um, but I liken it to, uh, I don't know if anyone here is a Yakuza fan of, the, not, the, you know, of the games. Um, but there's a game that came out in the Yakuza franchise that's also kind of uh, overlooked and considered one of the black sheep of the franchise, which is Dead Souls. Mm -hmm. um, it's a beautiful game. For some reason in the early 2010s, there was this boom of popularity in games that were not really like an arena shooter having like an arena shooter vibe. That's the best way I could define it where it's third person, you have a lot of freedom in your movement, and you're sort of gun and it's an action like third person action shooter and i don't really know how to define that thing because it's not like what let's say an arena shooter like gears of war or like uncharted at that time but it's more of the hey um you're just there's enemies here make sure you kind of kill them like it can be like devil may cry but less flashy in a way I love the notes I, on the board here as they try to figure stuff out. It just says Melissa, some yep. scribbles. <laughs> what I assume yeah. is a mitochondria. It says Tina or something on the one part. Oh, yeah. I've never, oh, Eve. I see it says Eve with like a little yes. arrow. Some storyboarding, it looks like. Oh, yeah. For um, well, We're going to be talking a lot during the um, the waiting portions. Right now, we actually do have a little bit of tech. Um, you notice there's a lot of inventory swapping. And we're finally getting into uh, weapon changing. And uh, we, we equipped armor, but um, Chris, do you like to tell us a little bit how the tools and the weapon swapping works? So the, the weapons and the tool, you'll end up finding some tools um, throughout the run itself. I would say probably like three or four, maybe. Um, but... The way I like to call it is that with the run, um, when you go ahead and adjust the tool, you can either adjust, you, you can either take properties from one gun and put it to another, whether it's the stat changes or whether it's some of the stat properties. Some um, some weapons can shoot more, you know, two, three, four, up to five probably. Some have freezing um, applications, but um, in this case, you can use them. And what we like to do with the run is we we'll go ahead, take the, the weapon itself and just, at least in the beginning portion, get all the attack power we can to, to go ahead and try to steamroll through uh, some of these uh, these bosses or even enemies that we normally wouldn't um, be yeah. able to with regular guns. The common theme of all of the gun menuing we'll be doing is taking the gun we're doing and taking its bonus stats and putting them into the next one because it's going to carry all of our offensive uh, upgrades and points we put into it uh, into the new gun, which is what we want. And then we'll, for a little bit, we'll do a lot of these earlier guns. We'll also take their bonus stats, but later in the run, we'll see that we'll take, like, Rate of Fire. If we're lucky with the Micro Uzi, we'll see some other fun upgrades. And it's very crucial within the run itself because, and the only reason I say that is because one little mistake when you're tuning your weapons can completely kill a run. Yeah, I was actually so going to say, this careful. is this is a thing I see people who are playing it casually for the first time usually get kind of held up on because it's not really well explained in the game. There's literally that one screen in the police station, and I don't really think it does a good job of explaining it. A lot of people mess themselves up at the late game if they just don't yep. pick up what needs to be happening. <laughs> Yep. That's why I always say this game is very easy to like. It's easier to speed run this game than to actually play a cash. Oh, absolutely. absolutely, because of because of that main point, you know. So it, it's pretty interesting. And my advice to people who play the game for the first time is to, if you're thinking about upgrading your gun, just go and save first. Yep. Always mm -hmm. save before you do it, just so you can go back. Because it's fun to experiment. That's part of it too. But you don't want to lock yourself out. Um, as well, uh, I do want to, one, mention what's going to be coming up here in a moment because we're going to be hitting uh, the first of the new routes. Uh, the new route is something that came, like I said, earlier in the past year, and uh, this was found to also shout outs to the runner, uh, Crazy Awesome, uh, an absolute wild, I wild lad who yeah. uh, did a category <laughs> called Starter Pistol Percent. And the idea is you take the starter gun and you go all the way to the final boss with it. But while doing that, he found out that, hey, wait a minute. 
there's extra tools around and you can just get more damage for your guns. And with this, he came up with something called the hammer route. Uh, the idea of the hammer route is, hey, uh, Chris talked about it earlier, we get offense one, we get offense two. We're getting more guns. We're putting everything into offense. Wait, ammo, wait, wait pacing our shots? No, oh, by the way, we got ammo 15. That's really bad. We're gonna have to make up for that later with an additional tool. It is bad luck, but we have been getting a lot of crits lately. So hopefully, we, maybe we get the YOLO tool. Maybe we get the YOLO yeah. tool, right? It's the Christmas. Give me the YOLO tool. It's Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> um, while this fight's happening, um, talking more about it, so we're gonna be gathering more of these tools, and we're gonna be getting weapons that weren't gotten before in the route, because we really want to make sure that we're gonna have enough damage to get into the late game. Because uh, by the time we're there, we're gonna be able to save a lot of time, or even some of the, because um, B was talking about this earlier, uh, between the two guns that we're gonna be getting late game, the Micro Uzi, the M10, the difference is gonna be more negligible than usual, because we're just gonna have so much damage, it won't matter as much. Um, as well, a bunch of little things to mention. Um, we did get ammo in that box. Uh, normally, you'd want a tool, but even with the ammo, we're actually getting more ammo. Uh, one of the downsides of this route is that you're going to need a lot of ammo. Uh, later in the game, we're going to be going to a certain gun that is going to be hemorrhaging ammo. Uh, so just the more we have, the better it is. As well, a lot of the little things at once. Uh, the ammo in that gun needs to be on an even number because since we fire two bullets per shot, uh, when we run out, we want to make sure that we're on zero. These and birds. if we happen to get the tool there, just real quick about the game, the run itself, I would have been able to menu the gun I picked up, and crits would one-shot these birds, potentially. Wow, that was actually not a bad drop. Also, we have our first level-up system coming up. Uh, are you doing it here, or you do it later? I do it later with the other chest now. Ah, I gotcha. Because we don't it fight anything before it at this point. Makes so sense. Save a menu. I was uh, just going to add, these birds are annoying because they actually are what need to force you into like severe inventory management if you pick up uh -huh. that junk it has yeah. no relevance to the regular gameplay that's more of like a you can collect like 300 of them to get some kind of like gun i think i'm not sure and it's always the it's always the birds or crows or whatever flying like creatures yep. that will always drop junk even worse, uh, as the game progresses, certain items are no longer good and they become junk. Because uh, right yeah. now we're getting good drops like Medicine 1, Ammo is nice. Uh, ammo is never bad. But Medicine 1 and 2, as we go through the game, when you're hitting end game, you want Medicine 3 and 4. <laughs> so getting Medicine 1, oh wow, I can't believe it. 45 health is taking an inventory slot. Yay. That actually becomes bad. You don't <laughs> want those because you need the inventory space. And certain enemies are just going to drop them like mad. Also, uh, what, what's happening in the opera here? This one's different. This one, this is an outdoor show, and instead of being all fiery, now it's liquid. It's like uh, all the Jello. stages, uh, they, the Jello. elements. They I decided like to go the Jello the route because there's there, there's some inconsistencies with that because you could like in the in the opera everybody like completely disappeared, but you just saw that one guy's like his pants still was there. There was some bones. Like it's very bizarre. My theory is that the pile of goo took the pants for later, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's like, a, you know, baby clothes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you like to put them in like a drawer, you'll find it 20 years later. It's it's, it's a sure. whole thing. I have dad jokes, but I'm going to refrain so hard right now. That must be tough for you. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's very <laughs> tough. Like, I'm sweating right now. I don't have holding, mom jokes. Holding all of it back. I'm also sweating, but for different reasons. Unrelated oh, to this beard <laughs> and sweater that I'm wearing. So, uh, we can actually talk about that a little bit, because I'm guessing it's the worms. Oh, yeah. Mm. Um, people who do not know, uh, the worm fight is going to be... Um, every level has a boss fight. Uh, the, actually, tell me more than one. But the worm fight is going to be... Uh, these days, I definitely think it's better. I think with uh, runner routing, it's definitely less bad than it used to be, but it can still be a mean fight if things go bad. Um, before that, though, we're actually doing some, um, you know, inventory grabs for later. Um, RJ grabbed a revive, and right now he's actually making his way over to get an additional tool. Um, this is all part of the route as well. We're going to be getting these tools, and I think you're going to upgrade, um, swap over the stats in the, well, it's the M203, the grenade launcher we got. Yeah, we're going to do the grenade launcher first. And then if we is happen this... to get YOLO tool, we'll do the second pistol. 
Have you ever gotten it as a super tool? I've never gotten it. No, I have you not. You can get a super tool here? Yes. Oh, I was like, is it Can you is imagine it happened right when it happened, like right when he said it? Yeah. That's crazy. I was just getting ready to ask if this was a tool, like 100%. But yeah, I, 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 never, I, never, I never knew about it. I didn't know about the super tool. It's a 1% chance of the super tool right there. I've never gotten it. I've seen other people get it, but I've never gotten it. Yeah, I've um, done hundreds and hundreds of runs of this game, and I have never seen it. Never Same. seen it. Um, as well, we have the damage upgrade. Uh, this is going to be interesting because whenever you level up, uh, you get a certain amount of, like, I think battle points or something like that, and then you can stab that into different things like inventory or ATB. Uh, the first one we're going to be doing is offense, and we're actually going to be going to offense for longer than we normally do, because uh, offense is going to allow us to hit really hard as part of this hammer route. Uh, this fight's just going to be the birds. Um, there's actually going to be a neat strat here where uh, Arte's going to be aiming at individual birds, because at this point a crit will one-shot them. Uh, there'll always be two shot here as long as you're in range, so it's actually worth it to always swap your target because in theory you can one shot each of them, which really, really good fight. Yeah, it's going pretty well so yeah. far. The second, the third crit we had. Oh, he's too far away. Come, come in. Oh. <laughs> Get away jerk. from me. Also, uh, popular request from Twitch chats, uh, Chris. They want to hear your dad jokes. <laughs> they wanna Please, had, bird. Uh, they want to hear what you had uh, ammoed up. <laughs> What oh does Iabrea use to get rid of that big, giant goo? What? Oh I my god. Goo gone. Oh. <laughs> oh. Is that even a joke? That's just like what goo gone. Goo gone is a thing, yeah. and that's what it does. Like, yes, but Gugan it's jello. <laughs> it's not really like. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bad ATBs for these last two fights, by the way. Don't hit me. So, I'm not Die. gonna lie. Please uh, don't hit maybe me. Maybe B would know this. Um, oh. or really, any of you would know this. Um, how does the? How do you know when the ATB? Like, I never know when you get a good one or a bad one. Is it based on when you ended in the last fight, or is it just random when you get into I a fight? I thought it was random. I really think it's just random. Because, yeah, like, I, I, I wonder, that. like, is there anything I can do better? Because, like, when I get in the worm fight later, like, having a good ATB is like, all right, I can get a good worm fight. It's like, oh, well, I mm. guess I'll just go uh, die, I guess. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, it's ATB is random. Even when you have the attribute, the quick shot attribute from the PPK weapon, which would normally be found on day five, it's still. You're still looking at like a what a 64 Why did chance I do that? that ATP yeah. is up. Well, you got some full, so it worked out. Also, uh, we have a bunch of uh, blesses right now. Whatever you want for good RNG, we're ready to go for the YOLO tool. Let's do it. Let's Come on, see. YOLO tool. This could either be a tool or a defense one or PE one. Merry cool. Christmas, guys! Yeah. All right, so that is incredibly rare. Um, this is definitely, that would have been a great run. Uh, that actually saves not getting one earlier. If you have, if you got the one earlier, we'd actually be, uh, what? You can probably be on really good just Shiva route pace. I, you still want to get both the tools because you're not guaranteed to get that one. And it actually will save you a little bit of menuing in Soho. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, do you do the um, extra tool to uh, the Shiva gun or no? Yeah, uh, in that day, yes. Oh man, we didn't get a crit. That's really unlucky. Do it. Kind of wild. The uh, mitochondria affects the pile of leaves. You wouldn't think leaves it are worked sentient. that way. In New York, they're sentient. They're they're built different. They're they're, they're different <laughs> leaves. <laughs> also, uh, someone here is gonna be talking a mile a minute. We have probably. Uh, one of the more interesting boss fights in the way it's very methodical. I'm gonna uh, save. Making the save is smart here. Um, anyone want to take the range of the worm fight? Because the worm fight is a uh, really fun fight here. Uh, I know we have a strat called the one to one and I think Crazy Awesome just developed a recent kind of change of the hammer route and how it can work. Uh, but this is Yeah, because one to one doesn't really work anymore with the right. new offense upgrades. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I'll, I'll try to talk it out while I'm going. So, good ATB to start. That's the first thing we want to look for. We're going to run all the way over here and shoot this worm first. 
So it starts out as four, and as you kill the worms as we go through, the remaining worms will get bigger and get more health. So we try to pepper some damage early. Also try not to get blasted. Uh, and, ooh, nice, it's dead already. And kind of kill them in a way that they're, we whittle them down so that the last two worms are in the top two spots. So like that bottom worm will move up basically. Our main goal is that we want, when we get down to the last two worms, we would like to go ahead and try to kill those worms at the same time. That way it saves, it saves time from the big worm. The big worm takes longer time to kind of spawn back up from its, you know, location. And, you know, it, it has more, more health added to it, depending on how many shots um, each worm has taken. I went up a little too high there, so I got hit by the other one. Hopefully we don't get hit again. We do have a revive, so we're not like... It's not super scary, but you never know. As you weird as it sounds, it. too, oh. for this fight, if you do too much damage, it can be a problem of not doing enough damage. <clears throat> Accidentally killing one of the worms before you want to is a terrible thing. Uh, let's see here. Looks like mm. the... Damage is still so it's pretty well. Very odd. So we'll yeah. see how it works right, out had for us. On the right one, the left one. We'll see how this turns out. Oh. All right, right one's dead. Oh, the reload! No. Oh, that's okay. okay. So we're gonna have the the uh, me. final one. Yeah. big boy. Yeah. Are you gonna big yellow boy. it? Yes. It's uh, gonna be sad. I think we could yellow. Oh, yes. oh All right, good, good. It's right at the end. <laughs> Uh, so we just got a lot of stats <laughs> on that one. Uh, we're going to be able to uh, level up offense four times, which is great. And uh, we're going to get some healing here. Uh, we want to make sure we're actually at full entirely, most likely. Uh, or near yeah, full, we're gonna at least. Uh, the reason why is because after that boss fight, you get another boss fight, uh, <laughs> which is fun, isn't it? Uh, the difference, though, is this boss fight is... This is kind of like salt in the wound in a way oh you just fought this really tough worm did you save the game did you go back uh because you probably thought you were done nope no nope. uh, this boss fight is weird because it's not the hardest but if you're speed running it i would say this one gets mm -hmm. a lot tougher um she hits like a tank each yeah, is the main is issue so, so small for what she usually does yes. and sometimes the rng is weird because she'll not she'll do this like swipe attack mm. versus her little like I don't know she like does a bomb yeah. in a sense right you want to try to you want to try to bait that attack um that because it does take a little bit longer when Eve does this yes because she goes oh, up in the air get out of here that's unlucky so it looks like uh, RJ is mostly playing the safe at the moment yeah I'm trying sense. to not have her yeah yeah um Wow, and she's playing me hard, though. Here she is. Uh, in terms of this fight, though, um, there are two methods of doing this. The swipe <laughs> okay. is faster. Uh, swipe <laughs> means that you're going to be able to keep shooting her without having her going up. By the way, good fight. Uh, once she kind of freezes and goes up like that and then just goes back down, that means you won. I don't uh, understand, so honestly, how to bait attacks out of her because she was the farthest she has been away from us at any given point during that fight, and she decided to try and hit us. Yeah, I don't know either. Normally, the way I try to do it is I try to stay as close as possible to her, right? and I try to time the hit. So, like, you know, when, when she's going to take her action, I'll try to move at a way, like, at a specific distance so that she will swing and miss. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, like, for getting hit. But, you know, you, you can bait a lot. The closer you are, the better, um, I guess, the better swiping she does. I guess the more she would Yeah, you would well, think right? the closer you are to her, she's going to try and melee you. But honestly, I have yeah. you know, no idea. But what was spooky, so I ended that fight with about 60, 69 health, maybe. Nice. nice. Uh, she crits with her melees for, I think, 72 or something like mm -hmm. that. So that's why that fight's so brutal. You only have 170 health total, so three critical melee hits will kill you. So we got lucky there. Good fight, good fight. It was good. We did some decently good damage, too, throughout it. Crits are a big deal in that fight. 
because it's a difference of hitting for 55 or 33. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can wipe out a couple of shots with, the older, uh, with some earlier crits. The older route, we always used to put in a lot of points to our AT um, to try to get that up to 31 as fast as possible. But at least with this route, now that, you know, so we can get more hits in, but now that you're putting more into your attack, you know, you're hitting a lot harder than you would faster. So it, it when you do hit faster, you know, you're not you're not getting you're wasting bullets for not enough like attack damage. So why and does eight. Benjamin not get affected? I just never I've never I I don't know why this has just hit me, but he was in there. Because he has He like drip. goes to the bathroom or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's because of his drip. Mitochondria. Yeah. yeah. His Hugh Hefner swag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's also In the fairness, fastest kid ever. He just sort of predicted the future. I imagine there's like a bunch of kids that will just look like this now. It's true, actually. Every yeah. you know, everybody a had prophet. a person at their school bus stop that was wearing shorts and like a long like a jacket or a sweatshirt every day. Could have been exactly. zero degrees, it could have been a hundred. They're still wearing that jacket and shorts. Dude, he has a stylish outfit. What can we say? That's why he was spared from the goo. <laughs> the actual reason is I don't think they wanted I don't think they wanted uh, a child being murdered by goo. Yeah. I'm guessing yeah, that's why adults. he's immune. Yeah, only Daniel's ex wife. Yeah. No children were actually harmed in the course of this game. They all left New York City except for Ben right here, apparently. Here we see a police officer with uh, Jedi mind power. He <laughs> <laughs> dead Why stop. Twilight, it's going really fast. Twilight, Twilight strength right, right there. <laughs> Look at all the cars leaving the city, by the way. And think about earlier on day one before anything yeah. happened. How uh, uh, Ben was not Ben. Um, Daniel just uh, zooming through the uh, city. Nobody's there. You, <laughs> it's the holidays. Except for oh, that like bridge. Everyone, like... everyone's on that one bridge and that one ice skate. <laughs> everyone's trying to get out of New York. Also, I like to believe that maybe Eve just has comedic timing. Whatever's the funniest thing, because like, uh, there's a conversation here, and like, it's with these cops, and they're trying to stop our new character here, Maedo, from like going through. Uh, one of them is being uh, like racist, so he just combusts into flames because Eve is hilarious yep. on her timing. Maeda so also just... serves as the, uh, uh, this is the, he's not in the novel, but he serves as the character that explains the Japanese incident. And the reason that uh, whole thing is comedic there is the police officer that catches on fire, Maeda is just trying to get into the city to help. But the police officer, instead of just like you know being like no, he also gets a little xenophobic about it. Right. And then there's another police officer that tries to speak Japanese and actually help him. But then he burns, so comedic timing. See, Eve Be is a just jerk, kind get of hilarious. <laughs> um, as well, uh, we're kind of looking at some of the locations we're getting to later in the game. Um, quick question: How long do you think day three is time wise? Is that like thirty minute day? I think day three oh. in its entirety from the end of day two is honestly probably only about nineteen minutes. Nineteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because um, honestly, we could probably get the uh, probably get a channel point prediction up in a moment here if we do like a what twenty five minute one or like thirty one or probably like twenty five because I think about the time that ends we'll probably be in the hospital. Yeah, we're about forty minutes away from the end of day four, so we're we're like thirty minutes ish. I'm trying to do math in my head and it's not working. Yeah, about thirty minutes from when we will get the micro Uzi or the M ten. How about the the moment we see we begin day three? We do a. I'm guessing a 25 minute poll. That might be too much. Cause we start, we'll actually start running in day three around an hour and around an hour. So 25 would be a bit much. Cause by 25 we're going to the part where we have to do the three fights and you can possibly get them all as refights. So it has to be a little sooner. So 18, if you did 25 minutes, minutes now, it would be probably yeah, perfect. Let's do it right now. Uh, we can do a 25-minute channel point prediction here, some fun channel points. And the options are going to be M10 and Micro Uzi. 
Uh, we're hitting the point of the game where we're moving away from the rifle to Uzis. Uh, the best way I can summarize it is the M10 is the bad gun. The micro Uzi is the good gun. Uh, so with this bet, uh, we will probably leave it open for a good bit here. If you want good luck, you'll vote for the micro Uzi. If you want bad luck, you'll vote for the M10. Just to get back on the the New York theme, this is literally every Soho apartment I've ever been in. It doesn't burning make trash sense, barrel though, and all. Because why is there a burning trash barrel? When That's they called literally... central heating. B. No, but there's, 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 it's not like the power. It's not like the power doesn't work. The TV and the light are on. Also, like, what's going on here? The 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 city was just evacuated. So whoever you can only here, afford talking. enough power for the television. <laughs> it's Dudes definitely live in apartments like this and see no problem. It's definitely the embodiment of that meme with Goofy's child going to the apartment. He goes, dang, you live like this? That's, that's <laughs> yes. that meme. Yeah. You know what the best part is? This isn't like, what, uh, Soho, uh, New York? Dude, rent's yes. like 4K a month. Yep. <laughs> For that. Big vent and a trash can on fire in your room. Hey, that's called, again, central heating. <laughs> it's also winter. And you see, they put it out when they're done. Did, did she true. put it out when it was done, or did it just kind of like naturally run its course? New York is very cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's drafty. Also, my Ada just slept outside on the sidewalk <laughs> like this. Even though there's a couch. There's a couch, the poor guy. I just feel so he bad. He didn't want to take any of Aya's central heating. My Ada is just like a perpetual good guy. Mm -hmm. So it's hard not to like him. Talk He's about not even wearing like an actual jacket. That's like a like oh. a dress shirt, essentially. It's like a stylish lab coat. There is snow literally like seeping <laughs> in that concrete. I've always pictured that as a denim jacket over over just like a button up and some slacks. But I can't tell. We'll have a lot more fun with the conversation in a moment, but um, I guess for the speed tech once again, we're kind of going between uh, just kind of riffing on Parasite Eve and talking about the actual run here. Uh, mainly because there's a lot of waiting and we're not going to uh, read all the story because we're mashing X during this. Um, but gameplay wise, we're going to the gun shop and this is going to be a lot of resources that we're going to be using throughout the run. Uh, we're going to be grabbing a few different guns here and even some upgrades. Uh, I believe in total what we get here is uh, we get an additional tool. I don't know if you go for the range upgrade in here, um, but we're grabbing a gun, another gun, ammo. Uh, here's the tool. And we're going to be getting a special upgrade called Bullet Cap. Uh, all this I is going to do, do not is. I do not get the range. Oh, upgrade. you don't get Bullet Cap? Oh, you don't not get, get this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you're not going to go for the range, but we do get bullet cap, which is going to just allow us to have plus one bullet capacity, on, you know, bullet capacity uh, on the gun that we'll be having. Uh, as well, it looks like you're doing your inventory now. Uh, we are swapping over to a new gun called the M11. Uh, this is going to be a good amount of speed because, as you saw earlier, whenever we were fighting, we were aiming at targets. We had to select, hey, I want to attack this guy, I want to attack this guy. Every time we do that, that actually takes a little bit longer because RJ has to think about where he's shooting. This way, we don't have to think. Um, the upside to Uzis is that every Uzi in the game is randomly firing. So you just push the button, you attack in a range around you. Um, the difference is though, it is RNG because you won't always hit the target you want and that can be bad. Uh, when you hit the targets you want though, very good. Also, RJ is gonna be playing it safe. I'm grabbing the revive here. Are you gonna grab the tool? Probably not. No. No. That's not necessary. I just, the second, I don't know. This, the day, the boss of this day is just in my mind, almost complete RNG. So I like to take a backup just for this day. And oh, if absolutely. we go into the final day with two revives, I'll feel super peachy about the run. Also, boss, marathon woo! strats, right? Yeah, yeah. Like any of the bosses in this game could just blast you right out of the game. So um, it's better. It's better safe than sorry. I I've done three practice runs of this, and I have I finished two of them, but one I did not. So it, it's it's spooked me out. So now I'm back to getting two revives, revives. Is a good sign, though. Two revives is a very good sign. I'm doing this for you, Chad. I'm playing safe for you because I need you to see this. But now we just do some more mashing. Yeah, this prediction's really close. 
I, I voted oh. for one. I put my I, I believe in good RNG, although if Me I believe too. in my points, I'd vote for M10, but I mean <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got the yellow tool. I think we get it. Oh, and little fun fact about the map. If you um before you enter the museum at this part, if you let it stop the animation, you could see a little chocobo on the banner outside of it. It's a huh. very cute little Easter egg. That is cool. I did not know that. There's also chocobos in the museum, um, but I don't think we pass by them in the route that we take. Like, they're like skeleton chocobos. Oh, I was about to say, I've never noticed, but, you know, that's not saying, honestly, too much about the game and maybe a little more about me. I'm a big space out kind of guy playing this game. <laughs> Yeah, um, like a lot of these sections are going to be kind of like you zone out for a bit or you just sort of riff for a while because uh, this is like uh, just a few minutes of, hey, you're watching science like this and then you're mashing it's the, X. Um, it's the NYPD mashing simulator sometimes. Yeah. Um, I actually have wondered if like it'd be cool to have like a turbo controller just like, all right, I'm going to go, I don't know, cry for a bit and then you just like leave for like seven <laughs> minutes. I, I, you wanna know, I literally you? have no issues with that. Just a fun fact, I do mod for the community, and we are trying to figure out a way to do it, because one of the, the console I run on and what a lot of people run on is PSTV, and there really isn't a lot of turbo controllers that are compatible with it. But if you had one, I don't mind. You can always buy one of those... Uh, it's weird, because uh, the world of adapters is fun. Um, because I'm pretty sure if you used a PS4 controller adapter, you can probably hook up a PS2 controller to that, and then you would be able to use that if you had like a Kiwami or something, I think. Because those are those fancy controllers, right? I remember Palmer talked a lot about those. Yeah, those are Palmer's trophies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> weirdly enough, I know that the PS4 adapters work because I brought the PS2 chainsaw controller to Evo, and it was a pain getting that running on half the setups because it's all PS4s. <laughs> Amazing. I loved those pictures so much. <laughs> yeah, uh, apparently I got in like some Dexerto article or something about uh, just, hey, a guy brings chainsaw and loses every game. <laughs> I didn't lose every game. I actually won seven rounds. Why did that have to be a part of the story? <laughs> uh, it makes you think, all in fairness, all the rounds I won were because the opponent didn't show up. But I mean, I'm seven and ten. <laughs> Yo, you don't, win, you don't win the raffle if you don't buy a ticket, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. But yeah, that being said, though, I think the adapters could be a way of getting and working on PSTVs. Which, funny enough, talking about the PSTV, it's a neat console. Um, the PSTV, uh, for people who do not know, is a bit of hardware that released alongside the PlayStation Vita, and it's kind of like having a, a mini console version of the Vita, which is like the sequel to the PlayStation Portable, uh, which is like a handheld PlayStation. It's a weird series of PlayStations that ultimately boils down to hey, wait a minute, this is really good for very much speed running. Um, it is a rare bit of hardware that is now more expensive to buy because people started realizing how neat it is. But what you can do is you can buy a PlayStation TV and speed running is weird because it becomes this giant hardware arms race, but you can get really good loads in a lot of old games because you can have PSN give you games like Parasite Eve and uh, really a lot of PlayStation classics, and you end up getting really good load speeds in comparison to someone running it on a PS2, which begs the question, hey, wait a minute, what are we doing here? Because uh, this guy paid, what, $200 for a PSTV, and now he's able to save this many seconds per load. The weird thing about the PSTV, too, was... Um I worked at GameStop for a little bit right before they discontinued them, and they were trying to get them off the shelf. They were only like $10 at one point. They were like, get these out of here. We don't want them. And the problem with them was you. It, it's called PSTV, but there was no apps to watch anything. It was solely playing games and stuff like that. Um, so I was lucky to get one, and then immediately after I saw them, skyrocket in price and i remember being uh, that's when i had just started streaming and i i ran this game on it too and i was like for streaming this is this is amazing because there were so many classic rpgs way before they started remastering things that you were able to play 
you know what's janky though? So, depending on the community you go to, obviously different, um, not even just rule sets, but just different games interact differently. Um, we had this thing in the Clock Tower franchise where people started going like, oh, can we run this on PS TV? And like, oh god, that's gonna be a whole bit of a mess. And then we tested it out, and apparently Clock Tower games are slower on PS TV. That is so on brand. Interesting. It's oh. so weird because normally, like Parasite Eve, uh, the fastest way of playing this game is either PS TV or you're on a PSP. If you're on a PS2, you're going to be at a grand disadvantage because you're just not going to be able to match the load speed. Uh, as well, there's another thing later that's kind of funny that also makes you lose a minor bit of time, which is, um, I guess we'll get into it when we get there, but disc swapping, believe it or not. Uh, this game is a multi-disc game, and with downloads, it's, oh, hey, let me open up the menu and just do this. Which, weirdly mm -hmm. enough, with disc swapping, it's incredibly minor, but the fastest way of running Parasite Eve is actually on the PSP, which is that weird portable console, which, hooking that up for streaming is a pain. And then playing it's a pain. Yeah, but if you manage to do that, it's technically the fastest because I think you just save a minor amount of time on disc swapping and it loads about the same as PSTV. Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> so well, if you um, really want to grind, if you want that like couple of seconds. Yeah, you try PSP. to optimize it, you go PSP. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, and now we're back in the uh, NYPD, uh, we're able to kind of continue talking about, uh, back to the run for a moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is gonna happen a lot. <laughs> they kind of foreshadowed in a conversation the plot here, and it is that this was the, the space in which uh, Ben was sent to be safe, because you would think, okay, yeah, it's a police station, we'll be fine. And Eve comes here kind of to taunt Aya, because this is her home base. And, uh, they imply stuff with the, the what's going to be the boss of this level, so to speak. Mitochondria. Was, well, it's one of the mitochondria. <laughs> it's Shiva. It's Shiva, Chris. The poor dog. Also, uh, Shiva is a victim. First example sure. of using the Uzi right there. You can see it just attacks way faster. Uh, instead of firing the two bullets, I think we fire five roughly. And as well, mm -hmm. that fight also gives us an offense one, which is a necessary pickup. Do not miss that. And what is interesting about the Uzi is it has a chance it, it has a chance to fire additional bullets at the end of it. So it's possible that we will fire up to seven seven shots per turn. That's just one of the characteristics of random aiming, but a perk of using an Uzi. You come with me. And we've gotten the first uh, <laughs> charm from Maeda. So uh, this will this will come up later too, I'm sure. But um, Maeda hands out these charms that have absolutely no value to the game. They don't do anything. People speculate that it was intended to have some kind of buff or something like that. But as the code presents itself, there's nothing there. Um, and then there's one at the end of the game that he gives you that you literally cannot remove from your inventory. So they, it's it's a pain. Nice, we got an iframe skip on that attack. Oh, uh, actually, you know what? We'll just we'll dump these later. We'll be okay for now. Uh, but this is also the first instance where we run through a room where we've already had a fight before. And when you do that in this game, if you run through a room that you've had a fixed fight in, you have a chance to get a refight. Um. I think it's around like 45%. Uh, so it's pretty unlucky to get it. But obviously, so getting refights plays into a couple of things. Like, obviously, it's waste more time to get refights. But throughout this run, we are sort of concerned about the EXP route, how much EXP we get throughout the run. So it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. I personally don't think any of these fights make a difference. But I imagine it's uh, mostly museum fights that would matter. Yeah, for the most part. I think some of the fights, like if you happen to get some of the fights in the sewers, they could end up adding up too, just because it's a lot of enemies, high-powered enemies. These rats are built different too from the sewer ones. There's something. There's something about these. <laughs> they guys. are. Also, it was asked um, in terms of top runners, uh, do people play on PSTV or PSP? I believe most play on PSTV, but I think Palmer's the only one on PSP. Yes. Uh, well, Correct. there's Palmer who is sitting in third with PS. And then ninth and tenth place on our PSP as well. So, one, two, 
Three of the top like ten my, are in PSP. Yeah, three of the top ten are PSP. All right, well, we get this refight. There's only two refights, and we got both of them in this day. Woohoo! That means that means we're definitely getting the Mike Ruzi. Also, why I ended up healing before I left this room. Oh, you went just far enough away. Just because if you get a little unlucky here, you could get uh, killed. I'm going to have to dump some junk. I keep taking all the junk, but I kind of want the medicine they could possibly drop. So that's why I keep doing it. We're going to drop all of this in a second. There's Nyx. Don't worry about it. He's fine. I think. Uh, we're actually going to drop one. Now, just so I can pick this up. Actually, I want a sword. The other thing for inventory management is you always have to, you, they don't let you drop the club. The club always takes up a slot within your inventory. So what we also just did there is swapped to a different piece of armor, uh, the CM vest. It's pretty cool. It's a little better than the one we were using, but it has a perk on it called auto heal, where if you drop below a certain threshold, I think it's around 25% health, you will automatically use the best medicine in your inventory to heal. So we will use this piece of armor for the rest of the run. as it helps us out here. We don't have to worry about healing for the most part. There is, so like if, if something was gonna do more damage to just straight up kill you with bypassing that threshold, you'll just die. So we hopefully won't run into that, but we could, especially in the boss of this day. All these spiders. Yeah, this fight's annoying uh, because if they weird don't pattern. come in, uh, you just hey, might not bus. be able to hit them. If you can do Stop what Arch is trying oh to, God. which is to have them center, um, no, don't do it. <laughs> there's a good possibility you can go ahead and hit them. All, but you also run the possibility me. of him getting wrecked by all three of them at once. So. We also got a cure M, which will cure that slow that that spider web could put slow status on us, which slows down the ATB and our movement on the ground. It's pretty terrible. Uh, we got a cure M from that, but once you leave a fight, any status effects you have go away. So they're kind of useless for the run to get a curative item like that. We really want to see. Normally, you just get ammo from them. I rarely see cure M's from those spiders. <laughs> cute, cute Pokemon evolution music. Oh, yeah, here we go. Diva is evolving. Oh, every time. <laughs> oh. It's Into amazing. Kerberos. Because it's These mutations. <laughs> it still looks good. They were this something. Day. Yeah, yeah, they were does. something back then. So we still got a couple more rooms that RJ is going to be going through before we actually hit Shiva. And um, this fight should go ahead, once he's done, should go ahead and drop the, the other tool that he is going to go ahead and use to refine the gun that he has now with more attack power. There we go. So we'll go and G19. And no, wait, wrong way. And I'm just going to heal up to maybe conserve some medicine for the next fight. May not help. It might help. Who knows? Not the next fight. The fight after this. The boss fight. Dar, I do. I've done this four times in a row now. <laughs> I'm holding the wrong button on the screen, and I go back instead of forward. Oh, don't do that at the end. Oh <laughs> boy. <laughs> I've done that. Is the dog okay though? Um. Hmm. Mm. Well, yeah. For now. <laughs> yeah, he's just going to take a nap. Yeah, we're... That's what the we're bullets we're going to use are Trink. Trink, trink blocks your uh, darts, so... I'm definitely gonna hoping take this a green nap. give uh, good RNG here. Yeah. 
yeah, this is probably the like most RNG to me in this game. Because if mm. you if this boss wants to kill you, it will just kill you. That's why I have all of the revives for really for this point. I am not nearly as afraid of worms as I am of Shiva. Really? Yeah. I always like this fight. I don't know why. There's something about it that's just really Shiva's fun. Troll. I like it if she doesn't yeah. heal every few uh, seconds. Yeah. But so far, it's actually good RNG. A lot of aggressive Ooh, a head's dead. Mm, yeah, head's dead. Yeah, he does that little howl movement when one of the heads has died. That's your view, ah! Wait, that's what that is? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. I, I thought that was just like her whipping an earthquake Hey, or an something. empty turn. Nope. nope something died! So there's only one head left now. This is a really good fight. Nope, if now there's die. one head left. Hey! Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Golf clap. Uh, I don't want that. I'm just gonna knock so, that. So, th the other move that B thought that Shiva did, like the head died, is that sometimes Shiva just. I don't know, she runs out of energy and just doesn't there's do like anything. A, there's like a or noise like, attached to it, right? Then when she is like there mm. is actual head death. Yes. Yeah, that's that that yeah. growl in the air was a head death. Like when okay. you you were right when you said that. When it heals, it does like a jostly motion and then you actually mm -hmm. see the heal motion and then sometimes Shiva just has empty turns, which Yeah. Thumbs up. We'll take it all day. Mm-hmm. All right, day four. Here we go, we're cruising. We've entered the day with the gun, the pole, the thing we've all been waiting for. The meme or the dream, as I call it. <laughs> all right, once the police officer talks, Daniel talks, and then you know it's your time to go. Also, Baker has retired after that incident. Uh <laughs> He had I don't blame him. Yeah, I don't blame him. Nice little movement tech there. You can go up the stairs before you can even see Aya on the screen. Saves big time, trust me. You can trust me, I'm Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> The Christmas spirit. I like that Maeda's in here and uh, he's he's just nerding out with this girl that's got a lab coat on. This actually yeah. looks just like the movie. This this little office is a reference to the movie, if you've ever seen it. During the regular day too, as we're running up to Shiva, this lady is in here and you can get a full heal from her. But you risk getting a refight. I know, uh, run wise, one thing I've been enjoying is uh, grabbing the Shiva gun. And uh, Crazy Awesome showed me the tool that you can get like right in the police station after the fights. I love getting that tool. It just, I don't know, I like doing more damage. It feels right for an RPG. <laughs> yeah, that's like the kind of like the whole thing do as much damage as possible as quickly as possible. That's like RPG speedrun 101. I actually didn't know about that, so maybe if I did, I might have taken it, but, you know. Yeah, um, it's the, <laughs> you know where, like, the, the, the bars are when you go up the stairs? Mm-hmm. To the, to the right, there's a room with a bunch of, like, prison cells, and, like, the very back, it's not too far to get to, um, there's a tool. I only was there because, uh, Crazy Awesome kept asking me, why do you keep grabbing this tool? I was like, I, 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 I need the revive, I may also grab the tool in here, right? He's like, grab that one. I was like, oh. Cool. <laughs> I started grabbing both instead. Because I also like grabbing the spider gun. <laughs> I just started throwing everything. All the guns. <laughs> yes, you're just like, I need oh, everything. I want more guns. I mean, I got top <laughs> eight. I'm a top eight runner now. Uh, speaking of uh, the guns, by the way, uh, we'll be finding out in about five minutes or so uh, what our gun is going to be. Yeah, just about. Yeah. Maybe a 
maybe a little bit just because of marathon timing and everything, but we're getting uh, it's there. It's usually you can do five minutes and get right at the gun the moment you're on the bottom floor. So when you're heading well, in we want to explain the pros and cons of the guns. Uh, yeah, actually. So, um, well, uh, Chris, uh, you pros of the M10. Yeah. End of conversation. Let's talk about the Uzi. <laughs> <laughs> so the two guns would be the M10 and the micro Uzi, and I do think I uh, really, I guess, no. The M10 doesn't have a lot of pros when you think about it. Like I thought there were some pros. Nope. Actually, there, there's one pro in the M10. There's one. I think it hits a little harder. I think its base I attack believe. is higher. Yeah, the base uh, attack so, is higher. Yes and no. Um, it is, but it's not because you get the ice upgrade, which is just does more damage to all of the museum enemies. Mm -hmm. Right. But the pro of the M10 the is that for the <laughs> sewers, I think you do more damage. And for the finale, you do more damage. Oop. But it actually, no, I don't mm -hmm. think you do because I think the uh, micro just has better stats as a gun. It really is just better. Yeah, <laughs> and you save and you save the itty bitty 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 piece of time of not going to the warehouse to collect. That's the true. That is the only benefit. And the uh, the quick shot, the tool. That's what I meant. So, so uh, I'm hoping that my uh, I bet night I bet like twenty thousand points. I hope we get a let's go micro. I believe I I I thank you for your faith in me, Santa Claus. I have a faith that this run has been mean to you the whole time. I I believe. I believe. It's it started too nice. I gotta believe. I want it so bad. <laughs> Mainly just because I love doing runs in marathons with the ice bullets. So everybody yes. can hear them. Yeah, oh, it's, a, it's a satisfying noise. We go doing like kind of a little bit of a run around. Boy, we will get into a fight soon ish. Oh, shoot. Med three. We need that key to get into a different room. Just grab that medicine three for hell. Uh, first, not even for safety. I grab it in every single run. I know each runner is different. I know for me, this part of the run, I try to go ahead and start using up my med ones. Mm -hmm. um, because you're going to start getting med threes at this point. I can't remember if you get a med four or not. Um, but you de you definitely end up getting some med threes and more med twos. Um, and this is going to be the point, part of the run, where med ones aren't really going to help. Especially if, you know, they're getting auto proc from the, uh, the vest. There was nothing I was doing about that one. This is one of the drawbacks of having the newer route where we shoot a lot of bullets, we are much less mobile. So we're, you don't always get hit as a result of it. I put myself in not an amazing position, but I wanted to make sure I was hitting bullets because with shooting all of these bullets because of the uh, five round burst, uh, it is possible to run out of ammo as I found out just yesterday. Also, we do not know what gun we got yet. We'll be finding out uh, once we get to the next area of the hospital. We're looking at... It's still going to be micro right? A manifesting yes. right now. Gonna manifest yes. it. And then that whole concept of refighting will come into play again in this day. There's four of our four potential refights. Uh, the first one being the room we just went through to get here. I had to step away, so I don't know if you brought it up, but sometimes that's not necessarily a bad thing to get because you want to get haste before the boss level of the... I mean, you don't need it, but it helps to have haste. I would think that the net time save from not getting the fights is probably a little more useful than haste in general, but having haste, if you do get it, is definitely useful. Yeah, we got this fight. So most of the time, and, and on a good pace, you won't, or with good refight luck, you won't have haste. But if you do have it, it is kind of nice. And you kind of see these flies, they do shoot uh, 
this kind of goo on the ground, more goo for Chris. Um, it slows us down, but if you can kind of wedge yourself behind the little uh, gelatin creatures and they can't exactly make it to you, uh, they will actually try to shoot the slow down goo at you. So I kind of go for that. All right. It's almost time. It's Let's almost see. time. I grabbed the offense first. Manifest oh. it. Manifest it. So actually, like you said, 50%, it's a 60-40%. And it actually it? leans It's it leans in favor of uh, Micro Uzi at 60. I, that is a blatant lie. <laughs> no, it really does. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Oh, God. I wish it was. I, I had so many nights of grinding this game where I think I wouldn't even see a Micro Uzi between, like, what, nine hours of grinding it? I know you're right. Here it is. That's the game playing you. Here it is. What is it? Yay! Merry Christmas, chat. The manifest. Doubters in shambles. This happens. This happened two runs in a row now. Here, have this. Santa has been a good boy. I'm going to be taking that back. Whoops. I accidentally put their revive in there. Oh. And during GDQ, that is a micro Uzi dub right there. Yeah. Never mind, it is 60. You're right, B. I agree. I almost right, so made a right here. Error. Right here is where he's going to now happening? want to take the M11 there stat. I needed to slow that down. And take him to the Micro Uzi. Wait, more and people then... bet for the Micro Uzi than not. Wait, I actually think that big of a gain. Wait, what? No, wait, why? <laughs> I thought I'm more people out. wanted to root against you. Cat That's not easy. evil? Apparently not. Oh. Yeah. I should have you know, it more. helps when you get the new gun to equip it. So I made sure to do that. <laughs> when do you pump the... Um, when do you go ahead and start putting more bonus points into your attacks? After you hit 31 now. Or after you hit 30... Yeah, 31 ATB. We're back to putting all of our points into ATB. Until basically after the day... Well, the midday five boss. Yeah. Um, all right, so now we can actually talk about what this is going to do for us because we got the good gun. Why is this gun good? Um, we talked a little bit about it, but after this chapter is done, we're going to have a little bit more freedom in the route. Um, this is normally the divide between M10 and Micro. Um, also, Micro is an Uzi, so again, we're going to have the random targeting. But we're going to be able to get an upgrade called Quick Draw. Uh, it's very unique. I think it, the reason why it works is because I don't think the M10 has the... Uh, like the uh, what's the attribute slots, slots for guns right yeah yeah so um with the micro uzi you can actually equip things like the like bullet cap is an instance we're not gonna be using that one uh we're gonna be using two upgrades for that we're gonna be using quick draw early which is going to allow us to usually attack first keyword usually you can get very unlucky at times you won't get anything which that's why it's tentatively rng but having first attack can mean really good things for us later. Uh, as well, we're going to be getting the ice bullets, which will amp up our damage in the museum by a ton. So we're about to start like a little fight gauntlet. We're about to go through three rooms. Each of them have a fight in it. And then we have to run right back through these rooms so we can have all of these fights again. Kind of a big deal for the run. As far as timing, hopefully we can at least skip some of them. We've had we've gotten every refight so far, but we got the Uzi, so I guess we're selling our soul our refight luck for Uzi luck. If you can dodge some of these, like if it works out with your timing, some of their little attacks, it's it generally is a good idea. You don't need to take damage. They don't do a lot, so that's what the the CM vest does for us. Is in fights with these things particularly, they'll almost always just proc the healing instead of killing you, unless you don't have any medicine, in which cases you're already in trouble. But don't do it. He's doing it. Good fight. Two medicines. I like to see that. I love this conversation. You like save these two people, this nurse and this old woman. She walks away. Uh, the nurse here is like, or doctor, she's a doctor. Uh, is like, there's people in the other room. And Aya just goes, yes. <laughs> and then runs away. It's like not an actual conversation. 
I should have went all in. You should have. That would have been real K, Christmas. I had 90k points stored. That would have been super holiday. That jelly thing was a bro. It moved right in the way. Shoot it! Oh my god. Yeah. You know, nothing to do with the run, but I realize uh, as I've been uh, running these speeders in the crypt here, uh, I, acc I accrue a lot of channel points. So I was asked um, in chat a couple minutes ago that they wanted another pun joke. So, yes. oh yeah, hit us with one. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be an if you pun can style, write, right? if you can write the word mitochondria correctly, then you are true. Then you truly are the powerhouse of the spell. Oh. Yo, I, uh, that, that one was, was actually a, good. Okay, yeah, that was an actual pun. I give that one some credit. There you go. There you go. I, I had to get. I had to. You know. You've been crafting that one it. for a little I bit? I had to craft it for a bit, <laughs> yeah. yes. Okay. Not saying your first one wasn't good. No, the first one was I'm terrible. I'm also saying it wasn't good. <laughs> Oh, I'll say it was not good. It was bad. I, I, I think it was the. I don't think you tried at all. <laughs> but that one so was this good. I get on props. Has plot armor. There's a couple of characters throughout this entire hospital that have plot armor that have always baffled me. It's her, and I think in the next room there's another set of people that manage to like not get affected by what's going on here. So B, talking about that, you know who my favorite character who is not affected is? Who? Oh. Uh, it is a random clown in the theater. He, he is affected though because yeah, if he you, dies. If you talk originally, to him. again, it goes back. Eve does it based on comedic timing. It wasn't funny yeah. to kill the clown immediately. After you talk to him and have an engaging conversation, then he tries to run away. Then it's funny. Yes. Okay. All right, it's we all finally skipped a refight. We were five for five. Yay. Oh, you got hey, the money. That, was was <laughs> that one in the lobby there is probably the worst of the three refights, so that's at least cool. The, the middle room honestly isn't that bad. It's just the two enemies again. Oh, this is where um, you were told the plot right now is that you're trying to prevent Eve from stealing sperm from the sperm bank. That is literally the plot right now. Yes. Yeah. Will we succeed? So the ball of this game is that she's trying to have a baby. This is an actual thing. Yep. Um, yep. The baby. Just play it safe for this thing. The, we have the, a special fight in this room with oh, yeah. a chonker jelly creature. Makes me hungry for it. For the jelly creature? Like, yeah, it wants me. I want jello. I don't know. It's always made me want jello every time. It was still gotten. I can't say any enemy right. in this game has ever made me hungry. I, although I am hungry nope, now. I'm not gonna lie, I might grab food in a little bit here. <laughs> I've never been hungry before, but I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I don't know, blue jello. Oh, I haven't eaten today. <laughs> I wake up before the show begins. <laughs> but yeah, TLDR of the plot of this game is it's Christmas. Uh, mitochondria is a sentient being that has been plotting. Uh, humans demise for years by living in our cells and finally they've been happens. living among us <laughs> because they are parasites sus <laughs> <laughs> and eve comes to be uh, even though her first form fails in japan that's the tie-in to the movie um and Aya stops stops her essentially, but not really because she does manage to get pregnant with conveniently the scientist from the museum's sperm for some reason. Never really, never made sense there. Um, and then she has the baby, and you see what happens at the end with the baby. So we what? fought one of these things already. The crawly guys on the ground. They're called mixed men. Ooh, two cure items. Cool. Um, but they could slow us down, but they also have this attack where they release the, the ball that's on front of it, or on the front of it, kind of like a hood ornament of a car. Uh, they can release, like, a bunch at a time. Yep. So I opted to just, you know, not even let the thing have a chance and energy shot it. We'll use energy shot a couple of times throughout the run. 
I don't know I if this is mentioned either, but the thing with machine guns is that you don't get to choose your target. So that's why sometimes when that when the, they release <laughs> they release you little dunked that co on me. cocoa puffs <laughs> is what I like yeah. to call it. That mm -hmm. you know sometimes you can just completely miss you know aim at like the creature and then aim at a far cocoa puff to miss and then you're wasting bullets because that ball can bounce anywhere to everywhere so you could get like three going at once it's a it's a mm -hmm. time yeah. This is also the part of lot. the game where Cure M's, Cure P, and Cure D start kind of becoming the junk of the game, too. You want to have a couple just in case, especially mm -hmm. for the sewers coming up, but uh, they can quickly overtake your inventory. We didn't get any damage from that attack, but I still got <laughs> slowed. I love this game. <laughs> please, please keep, please don't release any more. Okay, good. We shot him. Uh, I could have taken that mid too. Oh well, doesn't matter. I think we're probably good on ammo, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab the one chest to the right there, just just to make sure we're super safe. And uh, the real question is, did you level up enough to get haste? Yeah. Uh, I took your am. That this is the ammo. Silly. <laughs> Silly. <laughs> Uh, hopefully, yeah, you know what? We're just gonna do this now. Good call. Because it, you have to be able to pick up the junk that's in the first. Uh, oop, I'm running away without it because I do usually do it after muscle well. memory kicked in. You need to be able to pick up both items from these dialogues, or else the key won't show up here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yep, you got haste. See. Nice. Don't forget your BP oh. either, unless you... So, I've actually been wondering, is haste actually faster at all for the fight coming up? I personally don't think so. Like, I used to think it was, That's but then, why like, I it just kind of like, went all in on med and, like, med Oh, yeah. Meals. Yeah. Um, anyway, I... um, the military is gonna... They're planning. They heard mitochondria, and they got it. Uh, they heard about Christmas. They got excited to join the party. <laughs> it's Christmas. How are you doing in your outfit, right? Your your beard. Are you you doing okay? I'm warm. Yeah. Well, it is the holidays. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing okay. It's started. I'm starting to feel it. Yeah, you you see, you probably see me tugging at a warm like, beard. Please get away from my mouth, beard please. For an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah. I do this every Christmas, and I'm not stopping now. <laughs> well, I'm glad it's on. Uh, but boss So fight I will say real quick about haste in this fight. There is, so the Spider Woman is the boss of this level who we are going to see right now. Uh, Spider Woman can move backwards, which isn't good. We want her to move either like up or towards us or something. If she goes backwards, she gets out of range and will use this attack where she shoots three webs on the ground. And those webs are like super webs. You get held in place. You can't even move until they're gone, which is big bad for this fight. Mm -hmm. So having haste could help you with that if you were like quick enough to notice to pop it real quick if she ran away from you. But otherwise, I don't know if it's super. And, and I think now, with... now you're in the second phase too, you can tell because she heads to this little corner. Yeah, this is the second phase of the roof. She always also open with that uh, phase two. She'll open to that swing, so running back there is good. Um, also, really good, just avoiding big damage here. I know those hits can be pretty mm -hmm. mean. We haven't even seen the spider webs, which is amazing. Oh, that was a good fight. Yeah, I this think is haste. I, I think haste used to work on the old strats, but because you you know you roll so much pot like offense into your weapons or roll it over. Like Maybe with that's the new why. strats, there's no need for Although, you to pop I didn't know about because this. you're just. Um, yeah, I didn't know about this until recently. Haste is weird. Did did you know that haste lets you take more damage? No, well, I actually did not know that. Yeah, because I kept wondering, like, because you're right there, you know, so you got like 30 on the hit. Uh, one of the big things about that spider is so deadly is if you use haste, you're just eating hits. And it will, like, you can get one shot. I think it's one of the trade-offs, my understanding. That explains a lot. 
I did not know that until I believe I was talking to Crazy Awesome. I, I always wonder if I imagined conversations. I don't think I did, but like, yeah, apparently haste actually makes you take more damage. There's a little weird segment coming up that can really like mess up people who are playing this for the first time because if you don't know where to go, it will instantly game over. That's about to happen. You have to run directly what southeast? No, southwest. Yeah, the southwest and, diagonal down and yeah. left. Yeah, and if you don't do it, yeah, you have to go. You have to do it over again. Essentially, like the missile hits the building and it's game over. <laughs> So Omega Sin had a good question. Is that Eve actually singing every time she comes down, or is that just her music? I think I, I always interpreted it as her. Like, yeah. The noise you hear in in like that's like the effect of the mitochondria and stuff, but like it's it's her influence. Um it happens in the movie as well. Um and it, it's worth seeing the movie because the soundtrack is done by uh, Joe Hisashi. And uh, he is known for the Miyazaki films. And it, you can tell he influenced Yoko Shimomura so much with the same opera and piano sounds and stuff too. Uh, and it, it, it's tied, that opera singing is tied to her presence essentially in both. Go. I don't think it's in PE2, but it does return in some sense in Third Birthday, but I think that also might be tied to Yoko Shimomura doing the soundtrack for Third Birthday. Also, a lot of people keep getting surprised there is a movie. So Parasite Eve is a uh, novel and book or a novel and a movie that actually came out before this game came out. Um... It is briefly mentioned in this game as the Japanese incident. Aya is not in it. Um, she's a unique to Square character, essentially. It's a really corny horror film, but um, the soundtrack's really good. So we're, we're coming up to the end of day four now and going up to day five, which the start of day five, we're going to go ahead into the warehouse to, to pick up our tool and our, um, our weapon to, to get the quick shot. End of day four. Woohoo! Oh, yeah, start of day five. I was like, day five? <laughs> but that's what we're starting. <laughs> okay, I did go to the warehouse. I thought I hit five inputs over, and I was like, that's not where I want to go. But this is where I want to go. This is the warehouse. We're only stopping here real quick to be in this first section. We're not going in the warehouse at all. Yep, this is an optional dungeon that can be a place that you get stuck. I've gotten stuck in here on, in one of my first playthroughs of the game. And the crab boss is technically a super boss as well. Okay, good. I got it. I can't actually hear if I open the chest. EDK, quick draw. So a lot of people always say don't know about the movie and the the book um and that is part of the reason why a lot of people are like oh i'd love a remake and i am one of those people who always has to sour the mood and remind them that square lost the rights so what um what was it called symbiogenesis that was uh <laughs> something that was trademarked a couple months ago and all of the People on the internet were like, oh, oh, it's going to be Parasite Eve. And uh, a few weeks later, we found out that it was an NFT game that has nothing to do with it. Um, you would have to get the novel writer back on board. And I feel like if that happens, that's going to be known a little bit ahead of time. I'd be really surprised if that goes slip, like slips under the radar. But I would love to see a remake of it. I just think that it's going to be difficult 
to do because of the franchise. So we went out of our way to get the PPK and quick draw. You'll notice in the first fight, we just had like, you know, normal ATB or whatever. But in this fight, we started with an instantly full ATB and that is the quick draw benefit. It's an 80% chance to proc every fight. So we want to see it proc every fight that we can, but occasionally it's just not going to happen for us. And then after this little scene, we're going to go down into the sewer again. We, we love the sewers. Every horror yes. game has sewers. This one has two sewer segments. It's been uh, changed a lot, though, in a way, because you used to have to go through a lot more of the sewers. I feel like there's a lot less time in here now since different reroutes and stuff. Yeah, I'm, pr I'm sure you just kind of go where you're supposed to. We don't go out of the way for anything anymore, so... Yeah. There used to be a shotgun that was picked up in here that was, like, a little bit out of the way. And I'll say this fight we're about to do might arguably be the worst regular fight the game makes you do because these bats are... Oh, no, quick drop. Yeah, if you get hit by the rays that are being popped out right now, you get you get the darkness effect, and so um, with her damage, you literally can't do it anymore. It's basically like the effects of blind in like a Final Fantasy game. You that was a pretty good there. fight. Yeah, you did good. Yeah, it's, not getting blinded it's, is good. It's it's worse when you um, have it in like the hall here. Like I think this sometimes can be bats, but it also sometimes can be a frog. Hey, look at that! The frog is rare. Oh yeah. yeah. We missed. We want I never. I never too. actually know how close I am to. Don't do it. Oh my oh. god, it missed. Oh. <laughs> I probably could have taken that med too. I don't know why I didn't. It can give junk, I think. So I've just like, please don't give me this fight. Why did I say anything? <laughs> Procking haste right away. This fight is the worst regular fight in the game, yes. without question. I agree. Because you could get blinded. Oh, I ran right into it. That's okay. But now it's not so bad because I can cure the blind. In the first fight, we have no way of curing blind. Oh, almost ran right into it. Don't do it. I'm going to get poison. <laughs> it's okay. Not so bad. Oh, why did I not take all that ammo? Okay, it's, it's fine. Now that we're only shooting uh, two round bursts with a possible third because of how submachine guns work, ammo isn't as concerning now that we're here. I probably could have taken it just to be safe, but... Okay. So three out of four fights. Yeah, not it's great. Not There's still more to come because we day five is very long. Um, I always I always dislike this one too because you get the bat and it's like you have that really small amount of space. Yeah, you're like almost guaranteed to get blinded. Depending on the bat's ATV, how fast it's going to sonar. One thing but that I think helped me is if I do get blinded, you got to be directly on the bat. When you could shooting. get lucky and be close enough and still hit it. I just cure yeah. it usually, because, I mean, what am I supposed to do about that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And my uh, ATB will fill up faster than this bat, because it's it's a bat and it sucks. Do you do the uh, charge shot for the final bat if you have it or not? <laughs> no, I'd that. rather save it and be able to use it for healing oh, yeah. gotcha. later, um, so I don't have to pop any medicines to heal. The most fun thing for the bats is uh, one contact damage will negate any of the um, darkness effect. So if you just manage to hit the bat itself instead of the sonar, hey, hey you avoid it entirely. Uh, and then uh, Chris is definitely right that if you have one bat left, getting right underneath him will actually usually get you a couple heads. And then, so, if in the very first fight, since we don't have any cure Ds, if you get darkness, you basically have to just get lucky and either shoot stuff, or what I like to do is I will use an energy shot there and just get rid of one of the bats just so I don't have to deal with it. I'm 
ISC's uh, the mitochondrial mass doing its thing down here in the sewer, and she's like, I gotta stop mm-hmm. it. I, I don't know. Is this rust or is this mitochondria all over the wall? That's the mitochondria, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I was well, that's a lot of rust in weird places. It's Christmas spirit. Ooh. <laughs> So even though we got that bad refight in the... Oop, wasn't paying attention. Uh, even though we got that bad refight, it wasn't that bad. Uh, the fight itself wasn't too terrible. We could get good refight luck in the museum part after this and kind of negate it in general. And I think that fight actually does have pretty decent experience for down in the sewer. So it's not like the worst. It's just... it. There's a lot of... Oh, wait. We have to turn it off. I always... He can't go up. That was my bad. I tried to go up in the menu. The earthbound in me won't leave. Um, I don't even know what I was saying. <laughs> I talked myself out of what I was trying to talk about, so no big deal. We're still running. This is my least favorite fight coming up. Is this centipede? I'm not a fan of it. It's definitely pretty challenging. You can get really good uh, luck and good turn order and stuff like that where it actually feels pretty nice and easy, but if you don't get some of those benefits and rolls your way and the fight drags on longer and longer, it really does get scary really fast. Not only he hits hard, but is a big time waster if you don't lane your shots correctly. Yeah, there's like a pattern to it and everything, right? Mm. What are you doing? It's a fun Oh, these fight. guys, these guys can be jerks too. I'm not going to lie. I will take his cure pee. That mole, I think, is like, he has killed more of my runs than I'm willing to admit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, centipede fight. Uh, this is a fun one. Are you going to have enough for a uh, haster? Uh, yeah, we'll be fine. All right. Yeah, we, ha we have enough. So this will be a fun fight. Um, I love talking about this fight. I'm gonna say nothing. I, I got you covered here. <laughs> centipede fight, this is fun. It's a two-phase fight. You have a big centipede right here. Phase one, he usually likes to open with either uh, like lightning or he'll fire poison from the sky. There's the poison, it's usually his first attack. Um, you can see where it's dropping. If it hits you, that's really bad. Luckily, we did not get hits. Activating haste early is gonna allow us to kind of, you know, keep up with him. Uh, the lightning can be bad because it causes darkness, but you'll usually do this kind of pressing attack. This is phase two where he starts exploding into multiple parts. Ideally, uh, you see it was tried there. You want to try shooting every... Well, it's one mass. You want to get a random shot that kind of just lines up, you know, the it's body like parts. There. Really good on being all hit. Uh, an energy shot will usually take out one of the legs immediately, as you see right there. Um, we're now left with these rotating guys. Now, normally this fight wouldn't be so bad. However, we're on an Uzi, meaning it's random shots. So this fight's a bit rough for runners because, hey, uh, you have to predict where they're going and which one you'll hit. Uh, early on, it's pretty rough because of all the targets. Uh, it is being played rather safe right now, but luckily we are doing pretty good. Uh, two down, and the upside is long this fight takes, you do get more of the charge shot going on. Uh, as well, you want to make sure you don't get it too spread apart because mm, otherwise good. you'll have problems. Anyway, clean fight works out well. We get an offense upgrade, we get a new weapon, and some medicines. Uh, the upgrades you get are randomized. However, the weapon's always the same. The weapon will now be turned into ice bullets because that's going to be good. And as well, we get to level 31 for ATP, meaning that's going to be the last for ATP upgrades. We're going to offense after that. Yeah, it turns out that dinosaurs are weak to ice, apparently. Well, do you know what killed the dinosaurs? Oh, true, actually. Yep, yeah, no, I forgot. That actually makes way more sense than... Well, I actually, I was going to say Iabrea. <laughs> yeah, Iabrea killed the dinosaurs, Iabrea. actually. She killed them. She went back in time. She killed them all. <laughs> that also, was a pretty good fight for not getting rid of one of the body parts immediately. Yes, that, that, that was really good, actually. I've always felt this is the most awkward place for a disc change. I love it here. It's great. It's I so just, awkward. It, yeah. Remember disc swapping? You're old now. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's also, it's a little spooky in the PSTV menu because you have to scroll right over the power off button. <laughs> yep. I've done that. 
Yeah, I can't say I haven't done it. So, <laughs> and then Fun it's fact. also if you do it too early before it tells you you can do it, it'll soft lock the game in the yep. disc change menu. And that not that I know from experience once. either. <laughs> yeah. Why? I I'm having like oh gosh, Jesus! Its arms are so long. I know. All right, ice bullets. Woohoo! Oh, I didn't need that P. Cure P. Cure P. Cure D. Cure M. They're just they're just the junk of this part of the game for real. What do they call the slow stat that it's called Cure M? Um, M? movement. Because it's like darkness, poison, but what's the M stand for? I forget. Oh, let me let me check because I have the guide right next to me. I have the official strategy guide. Uh, I went too far. Yep. Central Park, what's yeah, up? I, I'm going <laughs> to guess movement. Like movement? Yeah, that is it like a sense. Yeah, it is. It's definitely what Here gets affected. Yeah, okay, this doesn't make it, it. It would be movement, cure M, but it says cures and prevents stiffness. Oh, no. yeah, it's stiffness is the effect. That's why I was like, what is the M stamp? Like everything else kind of. So it should be cure S. Where's my patch, Square Enix? This game is unplayable. There was a person in a lab coat in that door. Aya doesn't know who it is. Oh, Cure mitochondria. Fight, <laughs> this fight coming up um, has the most iconic clip I've I ever have seen of a Parasite Eve speedrun. There was a runner, Dream Bomb. Um, I don't know if he has run the game too recently, but this this thing can have a damage roll of up to like two fifty when it hits you, and I I don't know that he I don't know if he just just didn't know that that was the case or what, but it happened, and he like screamed. It was the funniest thing. But <laughs> well, seeing a hit take two fifty is kind of. Because you could just see right there, one yeah, hit. Because normal eight, hits are like 66. I was just too far away. That was my bad. So in, you'll notice it did like one claw attack mid there. It actually hit me twice, even though it only said it did 80 damage. It took me from 400 to like 200 and something. So the, the, scorp the scorpion is just a big weirdo, honestly. But, like, not good weirdo energy. Stop trying to lick me. These green, little green dinosaurs turn into, like, the crows of the game now. They drop med mm. twos, which we don't really need anymore. And they also drop junk. So, basically, everything they drop is not necessary. So, I pretty much approach every fight with a minute that whatever they're going to drop, I'm just not even picking up. Ooh, here's a good variant. So the museum has a lot of fixed fighting in it, but it's one of the only places in the game where those fights can have various or different types of fights. Like this fight could either be these two dinosaurs, which is good experience, or it could be three little green hoppy dinosaurs that give you junk. So kind of good, a good variant for us. And then what are the benefits of having ice bullets right away? The blue dinosaurs are weak to them, and then the enemies we're about to fight here are weak to them. We see a lot of these armadillos and blue dinosaurs, so it's like, why freeze? Kind of a big deal. No, cute. No, quick draw, man. Quick draw, quick draw rolls have been pretty bad. I'm going to get... Oh, yeah, I didn't get hit by that. That was lucky. Nice. Two full cures? No nice. way. I, I, that was actually... Wow. What? I have never seen two full cures. We'll take it. I have sacrificed so much for the Uzi chat. I don't think Parasite Eve was in the FF8 demo. Um, I think it was the other way around. You get the FF8 demo with Parasite Eve. I'm pretty sure. Somebody had said that in chat.
I think they I don't, I don't like want a, those med twos. More like a tech demo. Yep. Which uh, tech demos normally? Oh. Um, they're the, I think there's the name of different games or projects that are the hey we don't know what we want to do with this game engine yet. Here's the test dummy. The other thing that was interesting about this is there's a there's an interesting overlap in Final Fantasy VII in the OG FF VII. Um, this is in the Ultimania. They had intended for it to be in New York City, starring Joe the Cop and Cloud Strife and Aya actually look oddly similar. So um, a lot of the thought process there is that they ended up scrapping that idea, making Parasite Eve take place here, um, and then made Aya like the female Cloud Strife. Another variation, the more common fight here is two armadillos. But pretty much the... It is possible to kill the blue dinosaurs in a single burst if you get, I think, enough crits. Uh, but they almost always die in four. We've had a, we've had pretty interesting fight variation, TBH. Get out of here. There's my singular med four that I got. <laughs> That's okay, we pick up more, but like, oh my gosh, what luck. That's all right, you have plenty of med twos and threes. <laughs> Thanks, yeah, that's exactly what I was, I was banking on that. There you go, there's lots of junk. I just instinctually do not even bother picking anything up that they drop. Unless for some reason I feel like I'm low on ammo and I see ammo in the fight. Here we go. Kia Rio Hunter's favorite dinosaur. Everybody <laughs> at Kia Rio Hunter in chat and tell him, ask him about pterodactyls. Oh, no. no. He loves he them. Dinosaur. Can't get enough of them. Yes. <laughs> this is his favorite part of the game. Won't stop talking about him. Every stream he does. It's crazy how much he loves them. <laughs> This room has one of the worst variations. It could either be one pterodactyl, which is good that we got it, or it could be three green dinosaurs and a blue one. That fight just isn't really that bad. It just takes a while because the screen's actually fairly large. Brewski, I don't, or Brewski, I don't know what you're talking about. It's definitely a dinosaur and Keo loves them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Look at it. So majestic and dino. Dino with wings. Cactus mentioned <laughs> that you do go through the chocobo room. I know it's, I think it's after or on the way to the T Rex. I'm trying to keep an eye out for it. So if I see it, I'm going to be like, oh, look real quick. This place is so easy to get lost in, too. Oh, yeah, like casually, this place is yeah. really confusing. Also, mitochondria have made Aya have the most incredible skills to just jump from this level to the next. It's always been ah, just like that. Impressive. Yeah. She is such well. a strange character in this game because, like, she fights a giant centipede and a giant scorpion and has zero issue with it. But as soon as she fights dinosaurs for the first time, she's like, ah, dinosaurs? I can't believe it. Okay, so I have a I have a hot take story-wise about Aya here. <laughs> so if you don't know about Aya Brea's backstory, um, I think they describe her as a workaholic who pretty much go, go to work, go home, go to work, go home. She doesn't do anything, right? Consider the following. One, um, for some reason, she had a calling to go on a date to the opera, so she goes to the first guy that she can find, essentially. Some random. Uh, and then, her first instinct isn't, oh, hey, I must follow this person, I must follow this opera singer to the sewers. She is bashing rats and jumping into sewers immediately. I think Aya is a creature. I think she just spends her weekends going into the sewer and beating up rats. Either that or New York in this universe just has an animal problem where maybe this is just like normal for her. Right? Maybe she's just used with to these animals. That's this the crazy is where part. I have to be 
you know, a little bit. So there is a lore reason she is drawn yeah, to yeah, following. She, the mitochondria these. pulls her there, but it's more the idea that it's, she just had that on hand, like, oh yeah, here's this yeah. guy. All right, come on, I, I want to go to the opera. Pay up. Fine, I mean, the I'll fact go to the she opera. She had the gun on her, and where, where did that come from? Where was She's it? She's a cop. Like she, she wasn't wearing a jacket. She was ready to kill those rats. Yeah, she knew about the, the I mean, date plan. And the date yeah, fell everybody through. sees the rats in the sewer. They're all carrying guns. I think this <laughs> is the no, it's not. Never mind. Also, her this first instinct when saving a giant rat was to attack it. True. I would. I would I run. Tried to time I, that, right? Although I'm not I as powerful as Aya. This room is very unfortunate because of how big it is and how movie this thing is. Come get me. You're not going to come all the way down here, unfortunately. Not it's too bad because it stayed pretty close. Yeah, it's super long. So like it, they could be completely separated and you just do not have the range to hit them both. So just and that's how kind of how it functions for the last three ish rooms we went through. There was the middle room with the green dinosaurs that oh, this is an interesting variant, but usually an energy shot will kill this thing. So I always energy shot something in these massive rooms. Oh, oh man, I got hit by the oh. curve. Ooh, I'm reloading. Just, I'm just saying that I can appreciate Aya's aesthetic. Stop! How did I? How did that miss? Game is confusing. Don't you dare! He was gonna poison me again. <laughs> This next uh, room is really interesting because I feel like a lot of people, there's no way that you would ever naturally find this Agreed. room it, because of the pattern you have to do. So basically there is to the right, um, there's an elevator, but you have to make like a seven shape to find it behind also, these. Also, oh, I'm stuck. I that see your gun. Legs. That gun that RJ just picked up is going to be crucial. Yep. To the end of the round. Yep. Actually, very yeah, very important for the last boss. And we'll Sorry, talk more about that uh, when we're approaching that uh, final set of fights. Although I have a question for you all. So we're talking about uh, how I has been dealing with these animals, and obviously it's an RPG, so we know game-wise why this works. Why do you, especially in the intro of the rats? Why do you think they had ammo on them? Because a lot of them just drop ammo. Why would rats in the sewer have ammunition? Maybe New it's York. not. Uh, yeah, <laughs> New York. They're just carrying bullets around. <laughs> I have no good answer. <laughs> I just don't. <laughs> Again, I think. Yeah, you know what? I think I like how New York's becoming the new mitochondria. <laughs> <laughs> New York is the powerhouse of the South, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> New York rats are just different than the rest of the rats in the U.S., man. Mm -hmm. Honestly, that's probably true, even without the mutated gun-toting rats that we're talking about. Everyone in the opera house just had ammo and guns on them, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I just was the only one who didn't combust enough flames, so you got to see her pull out her gun. <laughs> Also, well, why even in this place, them? there's just chests with bullets in it. Why are they here? It's a museum. It's the National History Museum. They need it. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I saw guess. a night at the museum. I know what they're capable of. Exactly. Although, I think this, I think this game predates the movie. Yeah. It's a prequel. <laughs> Also, like I guess I as a detective, I think that's her official position as a, like being a cop. But like, I, I think she's more nice. like an animal control specialist kind of thing. Skipping Weed. the refight in that room is super great. Yeah, and this one, nice. Skipping this All one right. too. All nice. right, good stuff. We don't need every refight. You do need some. Like we said, the I the exp matters. We want to be well, level yeah. thirty three by time we're leaving here, I so it does say, matter. Because you want to get liberate. Mm -hmm. Have we you all ever love not? Liberate. Have you ever not like gotten it? Not no, it. I've never done it. But I've actually gone through, as a joke in a dead run, gone through the entire last boss without using mm -hmm. it, and it actually went incredibly well and made me try it again. And then I got annihilated. 
This so room like, uh, is which one? The long. Eve or the Ubi? All of it. Uh, everything. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. Go, no, not Final Eve. Not Final Eve. Because she goes off the screen. So I don't even mess with her with that. She got liberated. But all of Ultimate Being, I tried to do without using. All right. Because I hear and it um, actually went extremely well. But then that this it has four phases. We're gonna talk into this more. But the second one is super scary. Yep. Oh, the real question is. Uh, so crazy. Uh, I don't think it's crazy awesome. Uh, I want to say uh, was. I think Cactus who told me about this. But are you going to be doing the Ultimate Being Yellow Liberate? I don't know if I know what it is. Maybe I do. So there is a low, low chance that because um, Liberate Ooh. does a random set of damage. Funny enough, it's like a, I guess it's a range of damage. Based on the amount of attacks you do, and there is a low chance that if you just pop Liberate right into the beginning of phase two, you'll kill it. Mm. It is. I think it's just because it has a chance of because it splits between the two pieces. Right. So if you of all pieces. Hit the 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 one we need to die, you'll be okay. But I am just saying, I, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I um, I managed to get top to. eight in the game recently, and the whole time uh, I was uh, freaking crazy awesome out because I took all the dumbest decisions. Like I skipped like one of the medicine fours. Uh, I did the yellow <laughs> liberate. I just took every terrible like risky strat that I definitely should not have. Uh, it made me laugh though, and that's what's worth it. I think yeah, I that's what it's all about. Thirty seconds because I failed to liberate too. But you know what? It was funny. You fail to liberate kind of often when you do it the way you're supposed to do it. It's just pure RNG which one she decides she wants to target with it. And a lot of the time she is just a fool. I think liberate hits six times total. It could be it's six or seven. I can't remember, but you need at least four of the hits to hit mm. the thing you want in second phase. Hello. After shooting it a little bit. So that jerk, uh, the uh, scientist, is now dead. Oh, did you get the clamp skip? Earlier in the game I did. That's in day oh, three. Okay. Eh, skip this one too. Nice. We do have to run through. The, this is the only room we run through with a fight that we run through three times. So we skipped <laughs> it once. Bit, we'll see if we can get it again. <laughs> he was a bit hot under the collar. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's a good one, Papa. All right, is it still too late to kick him out? No, that, is that's it too chat. late? That's chat. That's chat. It you said chat. it, though. I don't yeah, know who said, said it, it, so I have no Listen. other reason to believe that it wasn't just you. <laughs> I cannot take credit of that. Get him a Oh, just die. Thank you. Oh, I'm full. That's okay. We're going to use some stuff. First, we're going to do this. Ooh, not that. That could have been extremely bad. I almost just like menued, uh, <laughs> a menued a gu the gun away. <laughs> oh no! That would have been a dead run. There had oh, been no I, way to fix that. That's where the that. chocobos are. They are on the left of that screen. That we do run through, through this room again, so I'll I'll stop and take a look real quick. So here we go. First of two bosses we're about to fight. This is the Triceratops. I could let somebody else do some talking while I try not to die. So the first thing you want to do with the Triceratops, obviously, is just get rid of his heart shell, which is on his head. It's face um, point. That boy, that boy hits a hard damage. Um, and he, he, he will at one point doing a charge that I think he charges at you four times. Four to, four to five I times. think it's three. Three, one. Oh. <laughs> two. I could die, but I have two revives. I didn't die, oh, so we propped up. Oh, and the faceplate's off. Look at that. Beautiful. So when, when the faceplate is off, then he'll start hitting less Where like, am less I? Damage. I'm inside of it. Get me out of here. But he moves faster. Oof, that was pretty that good. That was a good yeah. fight. Yeah. That was really fast. <laughs> uh. Hey, well, how'd you get here? She looks like she's riding him. I know, and she's completely upright. <laughs> so interestingly enough, after this fight, they do throw you into another boss fight, so the game takes, like, slight pity on you and gives you a free full heal. 
and a med four here and 30 ammo. Because we are going to go back into another fight. I'm just going to do that. Start fresh. Here we go. The T-Rex that we saw form is somehow on that floor. It's been looking for us. It's just as confused <laughs> in the museum as we are. <laughs> ah, here you are. I've never considered that. Wow. Yeah, like, why is it up there? <laughs> Although it is a cool concept to think that it's, like, looking for you. I'm going to haste. Hopefully it doesn't do annoying things. Oh my god, every time. Yeah, it has like a, like, I always call it like a supernova attack. Like, it does this like, Jeez. space spell. Can you do like... the fire attack, please? Oh, okay, oh, of course. As soon as I run out of haste, I'm like, now I'm going to get caught in it. So now we need to run straight down. I know one thing about this fight I definitely uh, find is consistent is his right foot seems to be a nice place to uh, for some reason, he always seems to give you uh, pretty good RNG there, but uh, I guess, you know, Cumbert, Cumbert's always king when it comes to things like this. Also, I always do have to wonder, like, is, uh, is there always a good time to do energy shot, or do you just kind of want to hope to get it near the end of the fight? I just, I use it as soon as I get an opening. Makes sense. Which is usually during a fire attack, or this one can work too, because you're generally not going to get hit by that attack if you're standing by its feet. Nice. All right, oh, I just wanted to really make sure we took the gun. Good fight. Yeah, that was actually not too bad. The fire attack is actually super easy to dodge. Uh, I'm going to do this menu before I screw it up and not say anything for a sec. <laughs> uh, this one. Okay, and then this, we want the first. The sort. There we go. So our last gun change of the route. We switched back to a pistol. We took all of the stats from the Uzi because we have the next boss we fight is Eve for the final time. Um, she is not weak to ice bullets, so using the Uzi into that fight is not a good idea. She's actually resistant to, I think, well, I know at least ice. I'm not going to go out and say something I don't know, but <laughs> she's at least uh, resistant to ice, so we switched to this pistol, and then we also, when we went into that secret elevator, we went and got a shotgun. We took the burst upgrade off of it and put it on this pistol as well. So we'll be able to hit multiple enemies by using our targeting if, if they line up correctly. Sometimes they just don't like to like to cooperate with us. But we'll see. Here's a lot of enemies in this fight. This is also a refight we don't need. There's also a gun. I didn't. I, I forgot that it was given to you this early. But the Maeda's gun. It almost seems like it's pointless at this point in the game if you try using it. I'm pretty sure it just like straight up won't work for you. But it does have a purpose later. It's actually one of the reasons where if you did a club only run, it would still technically have to include that that gun. So we have we have plenty. We're plenty close enough to the EXP route where the last fight will get us there. See, there's a little chocobos. Yep. If we go up into this fight, there's a uh, scorpion we could fight if we needed the EXP, but we don't but it's a good place to go. It's pretty quick to kill once we upgrade the pistol, or to the pistol. But yeah, that boss gauntlet is actually pretty scary because the Triceratops could easily just three tap and kill you. Like it's not out of the realm. Those charges seemingly do like random damage between like variants but one of the hits it could do is 202 damage and it can hit you three times for it so you could just die and then the t-rex is kind of a joke in my opinion as long as it does fire i haven't had a good fight with a t-rex in a while but that fire attack is really easy to avoid most of its attacks are easy to avoid but I'm, i seemingly i'm never ready for them can we oh we actually got a hit that was good what how did you not attack the blue one Weird. Anyway, doesn't matter. Level 33, we're good. 
We know the threshold after the T-Rex fight, because it's possible that we don't get any refights before this one, where if we only got this fight, we would know that it would be enough or not enough, so we can compensate. The I probably sounds, should have reloaded. The sounds okay. of that room every time. They were a little too real about the sound effects. I know. They're like, we're going to really go in with the squish here. <laughs> <laughs> and now Eve is very pregnant. Very quickly. It's only been a day. So. She's full of Christmas spirit. Yeah, this is actually a Christmas <laughs> miracle. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was me last year at this time, actually. Full of Ooh. Christmas spirit. <laughs> Hmm. This is a long break, really. So we have this little cutscene and a little bit of dialogue, and then we have a pretty long break. So while we're on the break, why do you think Eve's hands are so huge? Um, I, I think the genetics wondered. of it wanted her to be really good at basketball. Maybe. They I, say big, know, big hands equal big dumb. Christopher? <laughs> I've also always wondered why she shushes Aya when the baby's literally still in her tummy. Like, it doesn't have any effect, Eve. You should know better than that. Maybe she's really paranoid. Like, you know how some people talk to the baby through the stomach or, like, play music? Maybe she doesn't want it infected with anything. In fairness, would you want the lady who goes in the sewer and beats up rats to talk to your child? No. No, you're right. I I agree. I agree with you. You know what? She raises her point. <laughs> I don't know if she was as cool as I. Uh, I might. I might let her. I don't know. Eva's oh also God, I... evolved to just have like the easiest labor possible. There's like no struggle. It just happens. And then you see with Eve 4, essentially, she just sheds that postpartum weight like it's nothing. Actually, no. There's 4 and then there's 5. 4 has some danglies. 5 is where you're like, wow, lucky. I want to point out, by the way, that every single time that Aya has encountered Eve, her first instinct was to point her gun at her. <laughs> yeah. That's, like, that's her instinct for everything. She's turned yeah. into a giant, like, with, you know, like, multiple fold, like, growing appendages, and Aya's first instinct is gun. <laughs> Kill. Even when we use the club in the beginning, she is still running with the gun out. Maybe Aya's just seeing every single enemy as rats. It's her, her, it's her gut instinct. It's one way to get through life. But yeah, this is a pretty lengthy cutscene. So we get to, it's, it's a pretty cool cutscene though in its entirety, just for speedrunning's sake. Nobody wants to mash through it, but for the game itself and the story, it's kind, it's kind of fun. It has good uh, FX cutscenes. I, uh, I goes from being an NYPD detective to like straight up just capable of driving a fighter pilot or a fighter pilot yeah <laughs> okay it's, so it's, the game actually does explain this i give the game oh. credit it's an autopilot uh, autopilot apparently oh okay they just set the track and the whole thing is aya you're the only one who's not going to immediately explode we put an autopilot <laughs> push the button so is there anyone in the other ones uh, yes, Are they and uh, they all blow up because I don't know yeah. why they even thought oh, yeah, they were back yeah, up. See? He gets booed, essentially. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So a lot of people wonder how the hell is um, Eve blowing up the helicopters when it happens. Um, the helicopters aren't the thing blowing up. Uh, it's the people inside having the mitochondria explode, and then the combustion takes out the whole chopper. As much like weirdness as this game gets, this part does weird. Solar get beam. But I have to wonder, like, <laughs> how much of the '90s autopilot can really cause like a helicopter to be flown automatically? Goo, like it's such an erratic pattern, beam. too. Yeah. Also, this is uh, the reason why, in addition, that Aya can just like leap out of the helicopter at one point, and she doesn't have to worry about it crashing because it's an autopilot. <laughs> 
I like to think that that plane still, or that helicopter's still up there. Oh, no, not anymore. It's not. <laughs> like in Parasite Eve 2, it would have been such an amazing Easter egg to just see like a random helicopter not moving in the background. I can't believe this helicopter made it from New York all the way to California. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I have to wonder as well, do you think the military is like waiting to like, they just know that they'd be waiting outside or like? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I have also always wondered how they covered this up from the rest of the country. Because I feel like anything that would happen in New York, like we Yeah, they know. did evacuate an entire city. Yeah. Like one of the biggest well, cities in the country. Christmas. Everyone was leaving <laughs> to visit their family. Yeah, nobody's there for Christmas, yeah. I don't know. I wonder if they do ever talk about that. They probably don't. And, and P2, it's like, they say that it's highly covered up, essentially. Like, it, that that's really, there's no, like, further explanation other than they covered it up. Yeah, sounds about right. <laughs> but I'm just like, I don't, I don't know. I feel like there's got to be some conspiracy theorists out there, like, I was there, I saw it, there was this giant lady. <laughs> that would have been cool Easter egg, too. Like, just, yeah. uh person who's a conspiracy theorist is a crazy person out in LA talking about the event or they think they're not There's, right in the head you know there has to be like one like there has to be like one homeless guy in Central Park who just saw Aya like beating up all the animals <laughs> yeah a lady shooting crows with an M16. <laughs> <laughs> there are snakes everywhere, and she gunned them down. <laughs> oh god! These are, these are really good at escaping. Like if they're well, if hers is autopiloted, anyways. Like yeah, this escaping. is where like the autopilot like, makes no it, sense. Why are they going so close to these buildings? Like why are you showing off? <laughs> I mean, it's 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 celebrating. It's like it's the three wise men, except it's the four helicopters. <laughs> well, it is Christmas after all. Exactly. Actually, true. this is a couple days after Christmas, technically. It, it's yeah, it's all Christmas two until is like Christmas. Valentine's Day. True. That's true. It's Christmas until my tree goes down. Yeah, that's usually March for me. I think my family sells Halloween decorations up. Which, yeah, I guess not surprising. I run a horror show online. I, I, yeah. <laughs> the trick is to get one of those giant skeletons and just decorate it for every holiday. Oh, I want to. I want to eventually get a twelve foot skeleton. I feel like I have to. Yeah, me too. But I don't. I, I don't know. Real if you've American seen it, dream. I don't like the eyes of the twelve foot skeleton. I want it to be eyeless. I don't like that he has eyes. You could probably take him out with some effort. But then, I, I don't know. I feel like he, he has those eyes, though. I wouldn't feel good about it. <laughs> oh, the morality of it. I get it. Oh, yeah, exactly. Boom. We got him, R2. Right on the screen. And then the Statue of Liberty cries. I remember when the Cloverfield trailer was uh, presented... I had this weird secret hope that it was going to be some kind of Parasite Eve thing. And then you got like a giant monster in the shakiest camera in the world. <laughs> yep. Oh god, I watched Cloverfield. I don't remember anything about that movie except for like the page. I, I just remember all the hype before it and right. all of the people who were this like theory crafting like, ooh, what is this? That was big found footage time where everybody was just like, oh, another found footage movie kind of thing. I'm pretty sure the only person to mention, like, the actual Cloverfield movie in, like, the past five years. Yep. Everyone talks about the Cloverfield Lane movie of John Goodman. But that movie's really not that bad, arms. though. I want to see that movie. It's still, it sounds good. Yeah, it was pretty good. Now she has some extra arms. Yeah, it's she's got significantly spirit. more hands. I like it. one of my favorite things about this game is how they always like when they're done they express them talking with animation because it's the only way they really can but like sometimes they just like freeze in a pose when yeah, they're Daniel. done Daniel always does that he's so animated 
He was power stancing. I love Daniel. Me too. <laughs> Here we go. See you later, helicopter. It's like a lost dog. It knows its way home. It'll get there. Last BB. Uh, four points. Kind of nice. Would have been a real shame not to use them. Because we don't actually get any more experience from anything anymore. It's basically just this eve and then the last day, which is just a boss rush as well. This is a... <clears throat> I just had a baby this year, and this is an accurate portrayal of uh, after having a baby. It's kind of how you feel. <laughs> this, is, this is where you got? Yeah, except I don't really understand. Like, she... She's just you know, really. She looks great, except for. You know, I went to like her up. feet. Yeah, I went to her legs. She's got some hand feet. Yeah. And one of those tails that gymnasts use on the floor routine. Yeah. Oh, I always call it her squiggles. Oh yeah. So by the way, have we actually talked about the M eight thousand yet? Like the gun we're using. I talked about what we put on it. Okay, so and why I guess we're we move see away it from now in action? Why it's so good? Yeah, this is this is definitely a better depiction of why we put the burst on the gun. It's not for it is a good side effect to use on the enemies we fight before we get here, but this right. is this fight is the real reason we're using the burst. Cuz this first E form has three shootable parts and we're going to be able to hit all three of them. This fight's also really mean. Um um yeah, probably she... the toughest fight in the game if you don't have liberate um, if, she go, if she picks you up specifically. Yeah. As well, in terms of movement speed, you're really only going to be able to dodge any of her grabs if you have haste on. Not to say it's exactly impossible, but it's very unlikely you'll get the dodge. Uh, that was a good dodge, speaking of which. Yep. Uh, which hey, guess I what? We have haste, to put on. haste on. I, you want to try to re up haste as soon as it's done. I just I missed a turn. I lost track of the count. What? Oh. Exactly. <laughs> I and thought was, I was so, far enough. And, so, uh, and this is the worst effect. She's yeah. violent, too. She, like, beats you up. Oh, I'm running the wrong way because I'm confused. Okay, good. This, oh. this attack yeah. is not as scary as a grab. All right, this should be good, though. All right. Yeah, we're, we're good. There you go. um, so this next fight, uh, this is the one where uh, she'll be flying off screen if we're not careful. Luckily for us, though, uh, we did get enough experience. We're going to be able to have a special ability. I think of it kind of like the, uh, what, what's the, uh, what, for the Final Fantasy fans, what is it? The uh, it's like Omni Slash? Omni Slash, yeah. yeah. That's what it is. It's, it's essentially the, uh, I, I, I can only, uh, forgive me, Master. I must go all out. <laughs> Just yeah, this she, once. She's... I, I approve of mitochondria taking over if that's what it takes after a baby to recover. That was impressive. It's just back to form. But yeah, it's uh it's like a limit break. Oh, isn't? that reload sucks. Ooh, okay. She's she's going up. Uh, oh. and we're not gonna hit her, but we're going for it. Alright, so Don't go up. Deliberate. <laughs> um as you can see right here. Uh, we just sort of do a ton of damage after turning into a mitochondria woman. I think this form is so cool. It is. Yeah. We don't ever get to see it in like any of the follow-up games, and it's so no, sad. It's... Yeah, because what is Liberate in Parasite to Eve 2? I don't think there like is a, a really Liberate in Eve 2. Yeah. yeah. You just get like, you can upgrade she fire did. and go. you throw fireballs. Actually, you know what's funny about Parasite Eve 2? So I've had it on the show before. I love that the final boss, the way you deal with it is pepper spray. Yeah. <laughs> you just pepper spray the final boss. I'm not kidding. It's like an item that you have in the game. And it's like, all right, here's uh, here's Eve in this game. Pepper spray. Right. Oh. Also, oh. rest in peace, Eve. I like how she turns yeah, in like crystals. Yeah, and goo, she like melts into a pile of goo. And but not before giving us it. one more smirk. I also think the scene is very cool. Yeah. I can't believe she's turning into eggnog. Like, holidays. that's so good. Oh. Yeah, she wants the you to have goop. a good Christmas party, so she turned into egg eggnog. She is the eggnog. Also, kind of surprised that since she's designed by Tetsuya Nomura, there's no belts involved in her design. I think he just settled for like the twirly ribbon tail and he was like, yep, this is good. Yeah. Maybe it was like, maybe it just wasn't full, full on Namora yet. It was like just realizing.
he probably looked back at the game and when he got to A, uh, Final Fantasy A, he's like, I, you know what, I could put more belts in this. I, he's like, it's the belts I didn't put in the game that haunt me. <laughs> oh, All right, so is, we're on the final day. This is where Maeda's trying to, like, say, like, you, maybe you should use the gun, but uh, Daniel won't let it happen. He was tired of those useless relics that we could not get rid of. That's true. No, I'm probably going to grab some. I'm going to grab the med fours. I, I, I guess I'll check my ammo too, but that, we're almost always good on ammo at this point, but yeah. it's worth looking at. They definitely play it safe. Yeah, there's no reason not to do it. You're right. Ah, dang it. <laughs> M8. Yeah, it's just M8. Talk to him. He'll give you threes, fours, cures. Ammo. What? Where is the ammo? Oh, we're good. We have a hundred. We have hundred and twenty bullets. We're fine. We're good. Yeah, we're good. And two revives. So there's no. Yeah, way. we do have the two revives. You know what? I ain't even gonna say no way. You're still good. <laughs> the only way you can completely botch this is if you accidentally run to the same screen off of the escape sequence. That's you the just put only so way much pressure on me. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> You're due for another dad joke. I hope you've been crafting it. Yeah, I need a dad. I need. Well, oh, no. So maybe you know what? Send us off on a good dad joke for the chase yeah. scene. Yeah. I'll give you all the scene. UB fights. All right. Yeah, it'll help. <laughs> He's like reluctantly, the, like, all right, fine, I'll do it. Yeah, it cuts the tension. So, all right, will we do this mid mid uh, chase scene, or would we just like? You know what? Whenever you feel right. Okay. All right. You're there's gonna come a time when you have this joke ready, and you're like, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Get your baby rages in chat. The, the sound baby. effects on this are so creepily accurate that it, every single time it makes me feel so gross. The only it realistic thing good. in this game. It's just the baby cries. The sound design as a whole throughout the whole game in various places is just super good with certain things that they do. I just, there's a lot of dead space in places that they probably could have done some am ambience a little better, but overall the sound design is just tremendous. But yeah, the real the, question, um, <clears throat> I'll go first. No, I was gonna say one of the rooms that needs music is the gun space in uh, the NYPD. It's silent, mm -hmm. you know, it's always oh, bothered yeah. me. They could have had some like cool jazzy menu music, you know? So are you going to go for the yellow liberate? No. Even oh. Crazy Awesome <laughs> said don't listen to Eck if you try to push it. Oh, that is that is true. But think about it. It's 30 seconds time save. Yo, low. Yo, low. <laughs> it's 30 seconds time save. You we do have, have two revives. revives. We do have you two have revives. revives. We got two revives. Right, we're, doing time save. we're doing good. it. I, I, yeah. I give it to peer pressure so easy. <laughs> peer I'm pressure doing. at its best. Peer pressure this could be either really exciting or we're going to die. One or the other. I don't think but at least I could say it's like Dice's his fault. That is true. Hey, if it works, then. I'll also say it's your fault. I'll give you all the credit. You get it all. <laughs> this isn't an all or nothing. So here's the ultimate this... being. It's a four-phase fight. Uh, you're pretty much going through the cycles of Oh, I thought it was going to do it. Now it's doing Life, it. Life, I guess? Yeah. yeah, so you got a baby, you got a kid, you got the teen, and then, yeah. I don't know, the fourth well, we'll one is just kind of... We'll see. Puberty at its fastest. Yeah, we'll show you what, what the great. puberty of an ultimate being goes like. We start with the baby with the giant Jimmy Neutron head. Yep. And then uh, after <laughs> so that, that, we have the uh, the teenage phase, I guess, or the uh, the kid phase. And this the is the phase. hardest one, I feel yes, like. The Here's the yeah, for sure. It, by the way. Um, the third one's split. scary for its own reasons, but this one is the most. Oh, yeah, we're going to yellow it. We're doing it. And it's I think I shot one. Right. see a lot of No, nope, I didn't shoot at all. We're going straight YOLO. Oh, oh <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah, this is the YOLO. All right, let's go. It's well, That's not good. Five. So we didn't even let it split. We just... Oh. 
I believe. If it doesn't no, work, go it's, back. Uh... All right, so this What's is three. It's uh, not going to be uh, enough. Uh. No, especially because she's doing the last hit. It's not enough. What do you mean? It wouldn't. It would. Oh my gosh, she did. It wouldn't have been enough with the regular shots. Let's see. The thing, the flying one no. is gonna die. Uh. Uh. Uh oh. You know. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm not. I'm These not concerned. things happen to the best of us. Who uh -oh. could have thought that it would have Stop shooting! Been it's shooting so much. What is this? Go away! This <laughs> way. No! Oh, oh, no! no. Way. Yeah, no gun. Would you be too gone wrong? Uh, no. Oh, I have not seen it do that in so long. <laughs> it's oh, this is so scary. All right, we're gonna use a three. Peer yeah. pressure. What? It hit me with its. Oh, it killed oh, okay. itself. What an idiot! Oh, don't do it. Oh. Uh, no. Okay. Kill Die. Him. Oh. You know, this just makes it a little more spicy. You know, there's a reason why it's called the ultimate being and not the okay, moderately okay being. Okay, we brought the last one okay for We're good. We're in. Die. Yay! See, it all worked out. It all, it all worked out. And also, Does yeah, like how uh, as a child, he splits into two parts with one of them being like a bat and the other one being like a crab or something. Don't you remember that phase? This is the Your bat like, phase? Super saiyan, super oh, yeah, saiyan and then he just form. turns into, you know... Whatever. Whatever. Uh, all here. We don't talk about <clears throat> what's going on here. At least we're really close to liberate again already. Uh, so I'll say right now exactly what you're thinking it is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we're not going to say it, but yes, it's we just know the it in. Yes, you're correct. Oh, I am not going to make it. That's okay. It's only like 90. Keep in mind, uh, there's a reason why they it's call the, him the ultimate being. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's the poo sack. <laughs> <laughs> so, something like that. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Let's go with that. <laughs> uh, actually, what would happen? What if you get an early liberate? Do you even need the uh, the bullets? Yeah. I, you know yeah, you yeah. need to shoot it about like five to seven times, depending on crits, for it to actually die to a liberate. I like how the mitochondria. So wait, let's see. The, the perfections of mitochondria require you to. Um, uh, let's say be well equipped like this lad and also be able to shed the baby weight in like a matter of seconds. That's what we found yeah. as perfection yeah. okay, human beings. Well right. equipped. But I was actually worried we didn't do enough there either. You have to understand the, the ultimate form of man. You, you know how they say like uh, this is the peak male performance? Yes. This is, is peak male performance. You may not right like here. it. You may not like but it, but this right here is peak male performance. We all turn into fish. Yeah. I... <laughs> This is the one where I'm like, I don't know what they were going for here, but it's also so uh, remember that gun we grabbed like earlier and we said it would be important. Yep. Uh, we're going to equip a random Uzi because uh, no damage here matters. Uh, all that matters is the amount of times that you hit because everything does one damage. So if you do a lot of one damage to get to phase two of this fight, hey, guess what? You can do it with this Uzi very quickly. You can one turn it. It is damage based. I think it's just 20 yeah. damage, but you can get a two crit. So you could put theoretically actually one turn that. It doesn't happen a lot, but it does sometimes, which is kind of a silly thing to say. I guess all things kind of happen sometimes, <laughs> but this is definitely sometimes. Here we go. Here's Daniel's big anime moment. This yes. is the MVP of the game here. Here we go. He's got pretty strong mitochondria resistance, too. Clearly. Flame on. Ever seen that movie Man on Fire? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I don't know if that has anything to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> It's a I good movie, though. That movie does not <laughs> feature a man on fire, by good the way. <laughs> and now Maeda's gun comes in handy because those bullets have Aya's DNA, which in turn uh, do 999 damage with each other. Aya DNA on bullets. That's probably I, the closest Resident Evil moment this game will come to, like the final somebody throws you a different weapon that ends up killing it. I think he takes a sample of her in the museum. He uses oh like God. a little yeah. 
thing, like a pinchy thing. I don't believe they, uh, maybe uh, Maeda just like supplied Aya with like, hey, Aya, here's gum. Don't chew on it. I could picture him <laughs> here's carrying some hard candies. Just around. Give them back to me when you're done. Uh, here oh, we oh go. yeah, Arthur, you're going to save the game, right? You got to gotta make sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a yeah. nice convenient phone right here. This yeah, is the don't... biggest troll, I think, of any end game. I, it's I really... so mean. Yeah. Because people was, like, so that's a tough fight. If you don't know what you're doing, that can be a really tough fight. And then you're like, oh my God, I'm done. Okay. Your first instinct is to save when you see that save spot, not just keep running. And then if you take any wrong turn in this, you got to redo it. The entire fight. Mm -hmm. All of it. And going all the way back to the baby phase when you last saved. Also, this music is... I always have to take my headphones off. It doesn't matter yeah, that I know... Inducing. Oh, I love it. But you know what? I will say this, because, all right, some, some people in chat might not be happy to hear this. Uh, there is an absolutely banger version of this song in the third, third birthday. birthday. Yeah, and it's one yeah, of the it best versions of the song you'll hear. I think they just call yeah. it Escape from UB in the game as well. But yep. it's just like a nice, like, uh, like electronic remix of the song, and it's really good. This is also a pretty trolly thing if you aren't really paying attention, like you're getting chased by something <laughs> that you're going to die. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, that yeah. scared me. Oh, yeah. yeah, you can always yeah. get a little stuck. Yeah, the one time I went around and went straight up and I was like, wait, it didn't stop me? Okay, and then I got, I think, just past here and it, it like turned a different color and chased me faster. And I was like, what in the world is this? <laughs> so. Also, I love that also Aya had to take time for the, the super awesome, like, Hell's Kitchen! Yeah. Like the, like the, the, the ultimate you being can't would stand hear the heat, her. get out of Hell's Kitchen. She needed her awesome line. She had to make sure that someone was around to hear it. Oh, him. time's coming up in like five seconds when go. the screen goes black. And, and time. time. GG. Woo, we did it. <laughs> good, good game. Good run. Yeah, it was great. Thanks. Oh, uh, yeah, we can only check sweater. out a bit of the uh, the ending here. We can probably watch the ending since we're definitely under estimate because you know it would it would make sense just to end it here. We do have the whole like you know final cutscene and stuff, so we'll we'll go through this and talk for a little bit more. Sure. But yeah, GG. That looks like it was a two forty three fifty six. Oh. Nice. Ooh, ooh. Underestimate. Okay, Chris. What's up? Where's your dad? Oh, oh yeah, where's oh, your joke? Okay, 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 okay. This is the final pun. Okay. If Aya was ever sent to jail, she would rename herself mitochondria to let them know that she really is the powerhouse of the cell. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Is the next runner ready? <laughs> I, I gotta go. Listen, y'all asked for it. <laughs> I, 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 I regret it now. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. I think better, like more so than completing the run with ease. Also, congrats on surviving with the beard and sweater yes. and hat. Yeah, it's really so cool. absolutely. You yeah. also, the um, is he all red? My cheeks are. <laughs> it, it's jolly like Santa. Yeah. It's yeah. The, the Santa glow. Uh, I do want to mention though, really quick, uh, before we get into any like shoutouts or anything, I just one shout out already. Um, Parasite Eve is arguably one of the easiest games to learn as a speedrun, um, not just for the game itself, but for the amount of resources runners have put into it. Um, if you've ever wanted to learn a game like this on speedrun.com, I guess also in the Discord, there's a whole text guide on the page that will literally tell you every movement and action you'll have to make. As long as you can read, you can do it. it it's... All it's there, the safe strats, the risky strats, where to make saves, every bit of detail that you would need is on there. And it is very well documented. It is. And there's even a video guide that is like slightly outdated with the newer offense up strats, but like for getting you through the game and the route you need to take, it is also super helpful because a lot of the bosses still function the same way. So it has really good resources. He he's not joking when it is like one of the easiest runs yeah. to pick up. As I swear. well, um, just being able to have a lot of the downtime. You're just mashing X. You mash X with one hand. You go to the uh, guide on the other one. You start scrolling down to where you're going. 
Mm -hmm. You were able mm -hmm. to keep up with, hey, this is where I am now. This is what I should be doing. And I still use that guide for the uh, finale just to know the exact movements needed. Because like, if I see it, I know what I'm doing. But it's always nice to know the very first movement per room. Because I'd mm -hmm. rather play it safe because I don't want to have the one hit kill. Yeah, it is. It, that chase is nice. They do a really good job with the music to make it seem like it's way more dire than it is you can stand mm -hmm. in every room for at least like a second or two and see where you need to go before you run yeah but that means also it's easy if you know where you're going you can save a couple of seconds um that being said as well uh rj uh, do you have any shout outs you like to give and as well if anyone would like to uh, find you on anything where can they find you uh, sure. Just one more time. Shout out the community. Uh, there is, on the speedrun.com page, there is a Discord where there are a lot of people who are willing to help anybody want to learn the run. Uh, for me, I'm RJ Smangit. I uh, believe my name's still on the screen. You can find me pretty much on any social media using that name. Also, I'd like to shout out B and Chris. Thanks for joining me. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Ictisis, thanks for having me to run Absolutely. this game. It's one of my absolute favorites. Uh, B, Chris, any final thoughts for yourselves? Um, <clears throat> I, I'm looking forward to everybody running it the next few days. Uh, that's mm -hmm. my favorite time of year because there's so many people playing this game and I will be playing it on Christmas and Christmas Eve. So that's, You that's should really follow it. B and watch. It's a great time of the year. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, no, I definitely, I want to shout out Crazy Awesome for being able to, like, to put so much time into, uh, into this game to find the Hammer Strat yeah, and a lot of, a lot of tidbits when it comes to speed running this game. And also, uh, even the rest of the community just, you know. Palmer there, and so. Primus too, because they really yeah. changed mm -hmm. how this game was before I came, like, from when I was running this game in 2016 versus what it is now, it, it's incredibly different, and it's so cool to see where it's come. Exactly. Yeah, it's true. Primus and Primus, uh, Turbo Dog, Palmer, all the original people who kind of like changed it. The OGs. The OGs. But here we go. We get to watch the scene again. This is only like a year later, right? I it's think I think like so. a day later, isn't it? If anything, it's a w maybe a week later. I'm mm, not I thought sure. It was Christmas Eve again. All I know is Maeda is still wearing the same thing, and I feel bad for him again because like it, it feels like he has a little bit of a crush on Aya, but Ben kind of gets in the way. Like, oh, can I sit here? <laughs> Also, I like the yeah. fact that uh, the whole tragedy happened to the opera house burning down, and yet they decide, yeah, let's uh, let's have. The also, no, I think this is a week because they're doing the same exact play, and they got the understudy in this time. <laughs> they and, got like, it cleaned. It's like a week later they cleaned it up, and like, oh hey, let's bring live fire back here. That, that worked so well the first time, right? <laughs> so they do fire, say the show must go on. Opera. Yes. I, I don't know. I feel like I'd have like the the cheesiest prop fire. I feel like I wouldn't care about like. <laughs> I keep the fire out. I kind of want to know why that guy's even holding a stick that's on fire. Like, what is the significance? <laughs> like, why why isn't he just holding like a spear, like a normal guard or something? Because they're going to burn her alive. And then Funny we get the part is, though, This is not the real ending. No, it's not. If you do the Chrysler building, so there's a new game plus with a little bit of an extra thing that happens if you get to the top of the building so that's the true end um this one i guess can be interpreted in a way that's kind of neutral in a way where like mm -hmm. there's still yeah. mitochondria living in us and we need them to function and that mitochondria is actually christmas spirit <laughs> yeah this is absolutely <laughs> christmas spirit yeah turn some of those eyes green and hey look at that it's festive there you go <laughs> anyway gg thank you for the run of parasite eve uh before we go on to our next and final run of the night does anyone have anything they'd like to add on in for the uh i guess parasite eve nope nope yeah just thanks again play it play nope. it 
Enjoy it. It's a great game. Play it. Exactly. Really yeah. I do want to thank you all again for being here. Uh, if you have not checked out uh, RJ Smangitz, uh, please do so. A uh, lot of fun runs. Uh, he commentated a couple weeks ago for Signalis. I know uh, he's ran Amori in the past on the show and Parasite Eve, obviously. So uh, Parasite Eve is definitely in the time of the year. So maybe we see a bit more of that uh, as we go along. Uh, for now, though, we do have one more run for you tonight. Believe it or not, there is more than one Christmas horror game. We'll definitely have more. Uh, the next one's also going to be an interesting pocket pick that I enjoy, so do stay tuned for that. Uh, anyway, while we set up for that, we are going to be right back very quick. Don't go anywhere, we will be right back. Alright everyone, we are back from the break. Welcome back! I hope you enjoyed that run of Parasite Christmas Eve. Uh, it's definitely a nice time right before the holidays, and honestly, I'm not gonna lie, uh, running speedruns from the crypt for years, I've kind of enjoyed, because I think this is the third time I've done Parasite Eve for Christmas. What can I say? It's a fun holiday time, and I like to get festive around here. Uh, anyway, uh, this year, Making a Return is another favorite game of mine, but a different category. Uh, so a lot, there are a few Christmas games out there, and uh, one that is definitely a, a bit underappreciated, but it's become a bit of a personal, uh, I guess, favorite of mine. I do enjoy it. I know a lot of the runners have been a lot of work in recent times. It is weirdly enough, Dead Rising 4. It's definitely a bit of the black sheep of the Dead Rising series, but it's a Christmas game. Uh, but further going into that, we're going to be diving into a very unique category in something that you might not know exists. Uh, anyway, going into that, we're going to be going to Dead Rising 4 with a category called Frank Rising, which we'll learn more about that, featuring a street bag guy. So take it away. Oh, thank you very much, Agdysis. Hi, everyone. I'm Street Bad Guy, and commentating along with me today is my good buddy and fellow Dead Rising speedrunner, Texan Red Wolf. Say hello, Tex. Hi. Hello. <laughs> And uh, today we're going to be doing the good ending for Frank Rising. What's different about this DLC compared to the main game? It's way more fun, at least in my opinion. But the main game's alright, we can just say that. Um, you might notice that we are going to be running in French, and that is because it has been confirmed to be faster. Uh, many thanks to Ek for mainly theorizing it, and then me and Zanga for just confirming that. And uh, we shall get started in, uh, in about a few seconds. So in five, four, three, two, one, go. So the first thing we're going to do is we are just going to... Oh yeah, by the way, spoiler alert, Frank is dead. Don't worry about it. If you play the main game, you know what's going on. If you didn't play the main game, it's not too important. I don't consider it canon, even though it is, but we don't talk about that. Uh, we're just going to avoid... They should have just ended it. <laughs> oh, yeah. They should have just ended it at the end, but that's fine. Uh, we're just going to kill these two here. We, it says to kill all the humans in French, but we don't have to kill any of the other humans apart from these two. We can just ignore them. And here I'm just going to spam dash a little, just because... Well, it gets you a little bit further and it just clears this little crowd of zombies a bit easier. Um, so, talking about some of the way this game works so far, we have a lot to cover over the main game and just the game in general. Uh, for one, uh, we're going to be able to sprint and do a lot of our movement because this is one of those weird cases where New Game Plus is just really much better and like I don't think there's a way to actively refresh your new game, so it's just better to do this anyway. Uh, mainly because you get infinite stamina, meaning you get a run. You don't get, like, massively beefed up, you just kind of get a lot of quality of life things, like, you don't die immediately, and you get stamina, which is nice. Uh, as well, you may have noticed, uh, yes, Frank West is a zombie. He's gonna have the ability to, um, jump really far, spit goo, and, uh, yell really loud. Uh, Frank, please target the humans, thank you. Yeah, managing being able to hit all the enemies that you want in a consistent manner is, is a bit finicky because of the camera angles. Oh, for sure. Also, out of all three of the cutscenes that are associated with this DLC, this is the only one you can't skip. So we are going to be here for about 20 seconds, maybe. Well, you need plot, man. You got to be able to know that shenanigans are happening. Of course. Also, that's Hammond. 
you meet her during the main game. She, she has a little bit more relevance here, I find, but then again, I can't remember the main game that much because so, it's not it's not great. <laughs> so How'd she lose her eye? Uh, all right, so fun things and all is I can break it down for you. Um, she loses her eye, I think, with the situation with Tom on Tom's farm. But uh, mm -hmm. Dead Rising 4 had an issue because when they made the ending, they introduced the whole cast of people, right? It's like, oh, here's all the survivors you're gonna work to save. And then like, they abandoned all of them in the mall. Hey, things didn't get firebombed, but you know what? Um, yeah, the only people who are leaving are like two of the main characters. Any other supplementary characters you meet? Oh no, they're gonna die. So this DLC was made to try to give more of the side characters you meet a chance. Like, oh hey, remember Hammond? Yeah, she can actually escape. Well, you, these people can actually leave, which makes sense in a Dead Rising I, game. What was going on with the game there for a moment? It was yeah. being all glitchy and weird. Did you did you do movement? Oh, I, street? I did. Yes. Um, basically, during that little black loading screen, you can spam the dash button to move uh, while Frank is not on the ground, and it, oh. it doesn't do anything. I just think it's funny. <laughs> so I just wanted to show that off. And yeah. Now here, we're Black, um, Blackburn's just going to give us a little bit of exposition. So we just got to wait here for a few seconds. Um, go ahead. Oh, it's okay. You go ahead. <laughs> uh, I was going to say that for this DLC, uh, the timer is back. So you're going to only have an hour and a half to beat the whole thing. It's actually one of the cooler parts. And uh, the difference between the good ending and the bad ending is the bad ending is like the quintessential any percent. Uh, you're just able to beat the game, you don't have to do any of the side stuff. Uh, good ending is the actual, you know, I guess the canon part of this, in theory, I guess. But you're able to actually do all the side missions, which are going to be these various challenges. And it's more interesting as a category just because you don't have any forced waiting. Plus, it's relatively shorter than the main game, too, which is always a nice plus. So you can just yeah, go like in for multiple, like every hour or so if you want if it doesn't pan out well yeah it's like an hour and what 10 no it's about an hour shorter than story mode yeah roughly that good ending it's about on average 12 to 13 minutes longer than the bad ending where we don't get any of the mm -hmm. optional princess wasps which give us our abilities in this dlc um and we are going to be getting our first wasp pretty shortly here. Also, I am going to run through this crowd and hopefully none of the fresh zombies follow me through the Kichiro Plaza shutter. Because that means extra zombies I have to kill right here. And looks like none of them followed me in, which is quite nice. Oh, there's a likelihood of them following you in? I didn't know that. Yeah, if you're unlucky, they'll follow you right through the shutter just as the animation's playing, so... It, it's it's not great, it's just like an extra body you have to kill. But there is a fun little trick coming up here uh, after this next cutscene. Here we'll be introduced to our first skill, Lunge, which we got from pillaging Calder's body. Calder being the big bad of the main story. His, his body's still here, don't worry about it. And uh, we're just gonna jump on this guy. Lovely. Jump and then hold square or X, whatever your controller is. And I'm actually wondering... No, we didn't get it. So, for some stupid reason, some of these soldiers that come out from behind the shutter, if they get caught underneath the shutter while it's doing its closing animation, they can just despawn. And it's both funny, and it also means there's one less person to kill. And also we're going to save our combo move just for the shield guy for convenience, because... Frank, please. Yeah, the shield dudes, I um I was doing bad ending earlier today and was like didn't use the combo move incorrectly and having to deal with shield dudes without the uh without the zombie bite is very frustrating. Yes, so there are a few times we'll come up against shield enemies in this DLC. Um we will mainly be dealing with them with the bite or the combo skill, whatever you want to call it. And uh Coming up here, this is technically a mandatory wasp, but it's also a princess wasp, just like the previous one. So what we're going to do here, hold forward and spam dash to confuse the AI. And now they're not aggro when they run up. Big thanks to Zanga, by the way, who helped 
root this category uh, and bad ending. He's done a madness, and uh, it's very much appreciated. Yeah, being able to um, time your bites correctly, too, is super helpful. Oh, for sure. When it comes to big waves, or like multiple human enemies. You also might notice I'm dashing up and down stairs where possible, and that is because it is faster than just running up them. You can also jump up the stairs, as that is a little bit faster than running up them, but if you have the stamina, then dash is much preferred. Oh, I accidentally run into the wall there because I'm a pro, pro speed runner. So, uh, this is the moment where the route's going to start deviating a little bit. Uh, we do have the main mission, but we're also going to be getting the side missions. So, the main mission's going to be kind of like a supply gathering thing. Like, think of traditional Dead Rising Overtime. If you're familiar with the series, you know the general idea is, Oh, hey, it's Overtime. You have to get a lot of supplies or things are going to go bad. Uh, this is going to be kind of the similar beat of Overtime. And uh, for this as well, what's going to spawn is these quote-unquote Princess Wasp missions. Um, in terms of the route, uh, it, at some point we're going to find a way to squeeze these in here. But we're essentially managing the gathering missions, but also the Princess Wasp missions. Yeah, um, we, we're going to start getting those Wasp missions that have spawned in. Um, not too long after this part. Uh, after we get to Big Bugs Hardware, that's the main part. Also, these are uh, feral soldier zombies. Because I love Obscurus. And they are a pain in this DLC. But it's fine as long as you can just run by them. But if you're not careful... Yeah. If you're not careful, they will drain your health very badly. So now we're going to get a uh, Princess Wasp that gives us the spit ability. And we're just going to... Vomit up onto the soldier because there is a little bit of a waiting period before we can pick up the last item we need here called solenoids. Okay, that should be enough time. Uh, please stop hitting me. Thank you. And now we can pick it up. Okay, and now this is the part where we deviate from bad ending and we start getting the princess wasps. Starting with this one that is right next to us. Is there enough time to get all the Princess Wasps that you need while you're waiting for Blackburn to tell you about the next item? Uh, there's, there's not enough time for all of them, but there is enough time to get the majority of them in this area. I actually was wondering uh, if the route changed at one point to avoid the one on the, uh, the left immediately. Yeah, I, I just do that because we can get it later anyway and it, it's a it doesn't make sense in a way to delay it where you can just get most of them done while you're in this little waiting section anyway makes sense also yes it is actually princess wasp uh the game calls it that because frank says it out loud i don't think that's the scientific name but it's the canon name because frank says it um so yeah, Blackburn tells you what the scientific name is, and then he makes the joke that, oh, well, they're, so if they're the younger version of the queens, that makes them a princess wasp. So there, there's a little variation on the princess wasp task. There's only, like, a few of them, but it'll mostly be either kill an obscure soldier, gather the princess wasp pheromones, or uh, survive, or get a combo. This one we just had to defeat an Obscura Soldier, which wasn't too bad, luckily. And now we can just ignore these other soldiers. We don't really have to worry about them anymore. Um, so while we're waiting, I'm just going to go through, uh, go over here, and I'm just going to start over in this side of town. Uh, just because these wasps are kind of out of the way, so I kind of want to get them dealt with ASAP. And that way we don't have to go out of our way to come back and get them. So, as you get all these Princess Wasps, what abilities are being boosted? Because I know for one of them is it's an improved dash, and I do any of them improve your health? Uh, yes, you'll get mainly health regeneration improvements for uh, tasks like this, the survive. 
task. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember what Defeating the Obscura Soldier gives. I think it might be... Also, that zombie right there with the Rudolph nose. That's an Evo zombie. They're also pains. Uh, don't worry about them. We'll we'll come back to them later. Also, but, this uh, question gets asked a lot. Um, yes, that's an actual... That's the game. Uh, the elf zombies are a part of the game. It's a DLC. This is not a mod. This is the actual game. Yeah, I... It, it's almost Christmas, so you know. Why not get a Christmas spirit? I appreciate you putting them on, by the way. Oh, that's not a problem. It was either this or the Valentine skins. And you know, thematically appropriate. <laughs> okay. Does that make this game a Valentine's Day game as well? Yes. If it's got that skin. <laughs> it could be game. whatever you want it to be, Tex. <laughs> okay, so now... Uh, please get out of my way, zombies. Thank you. Please, please and thank you. Navigating through the zombie crowds is a pain, but one upgrade we'll get in a bit is a dash. That will let us go through crowds of zombies a bit easier. But that's not until uh, we head back towards the liquor store. It's such a good skill to have. Yeah. That, just that slight boost. Mm. Also, this is the one uh, Princess was tasked with a little bit of RNG to it. Because these pheromones, they spawn. They can spawn in a random place around this construction yard. And it, you, you can never tell which one it is until you actually start the task. It, it's annoying, but as long as you get a decent pattern like this one, where you can just go around in a circle, I miss that, I'm bad. Then th That just sounds awful, it, it being RNG. It, it's RNG, but it's not necessarily bad RNG. Like, this was a pretty good pattern. We just went around the outside of the construction yard and led up to this truck, which is mm -hmm. where we wanted to go anyway. And then we could just hop over this wall and we'll get the final out of the way Princess Wasp uh, for this section. Well, that routing's not terrible. It's not awful. Uh, here we just have to kill a few enemies, just like the uh, mandatory Princess Wasp earlier. Just a simple case of chase them down, hit them. You could chomp on them if you want. They really spread out. Oh yeah, they do. But it's fine, as long as they don't run too far, which they usually do anyway, but it's it's okay. I Is there a way to get them to... St uh, not stun lock, but um, stay still? Uh, like with the initial Princess Wasp? There isn't on this one, as far as I'm aware. Um, it might be the same case, actually, of just spamming the dash button to confuse their AI, but... I haven't tested it, so that might have to be something to uh, test in the future when I run this again. Um, I, I, I saw at the corner of my eye, someone's asking what's up with the shadows. Um, I'm running this game on the lowest settings possible. One, to include stability and to hopefully prevent any crashes because this port is chef's kiss. Um, so the shadows are very blocky. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we don't want the game to crash. It's happened to me too many times before, and I... I can't tell you how much it does infuriate me sometimes. Also, this uh, this little task is a combo task, so we have to build up our combo meter to 100 for this particular one. So I'm going to not grab anyone and bite them for this little part. Uh, also, this wasp is right next to... Rockpile Liquor Store, which is where our next item that we're going to collect is. So I just leave this one for last, just because it makes a little bit more sense. And with that, we are done with this Princess Wasp. This is also the only Princess Wasp that you get in Bad Ending, right? Yeah, just because the upgraded Gizu is really helpful when going through crowds of zombies. Okay, so that's our final item that we're getting, which is liquor. And now we're going to the bus depot. Or depot, I don't know how you call it. Depot, depot. Either way. Yeah, potato, potato. Um, so on the way to the bus depot, we have this cemetery right here. And we're just going to stop and grab this Princess Wasp quickly. This is going to be a uh, destroy these... I can't remember what they're called. Destroy these... Devices, I'm going to call them. Uh, 
this is pretty simple, just running like a number four style pattern. If if you could call it that, I guess. There is a uh, minigun guy here, but we could just ignore him. And now we shall head back to the bus depot and get the final princess Ross for this first area. And then it's off to Rest Ridge. Rest there, Rest Ridge. I can't talk. It's half West Ridge. That's the one. It's it's half six in the morning. I've got a little bit of a cold. So I apologize for any faux pas I may may utter. But yeah, if you see just dashing through that little crowd of zombies, the uh, upgrade we got from the combo task, it gives you a little bit of a a damage boost, uh, which is very nice. And it just helps clear the zombies out of the way a little bit easier. Uh, this is just another collecting pheromones mission, so we're just going to go in a very specific order. Jump over here. I was just about to ask if this one was also RNG based, but it doesn't seem like it. No. The, luckily, this one isn't RNG based like the last one, but it can be annoying with the crowd of zombies around. Mm -hmm. So, hello, sir. Goodbye, sir. And just for a little bit of boost so you don't lose any momentum, you can dash off the top of the buses and to save your stamina, you can lunge on a zombie like that. It's like a nice little bit of movement tech and it's not too erroneous. So now, what did we come here for the bus depot for? To get a phone from a locker for Blackburn because it has some important details about the cure for zombieism apparently don't ask <laughs> apparently you could just bring people back from undead status now in fairness they did that in dead rising 3 this is true i i still don't like the like the idea personally i think it's like really weird you see, and done in a really stupid way the dumber thing is... Alright, let me point out... A I know this is a very well-crafted game, but let me point out a plot hole here for you. <laughs> um, so, with Dead Rising 3, they mentioned that the character there, Nick, is the cure. Yeah, he ends up leading the cure to zombieism, right? And uh, Nick goes back to Dead Rising 1 because Dead Rising 1 had Carlito's plan of the orphans, which uh, were children from Santa Cabeza brought to the U.S. to uh, be zombie time bombs. Correct? This is correct. Y yes. So yeah. the game mentions that, that Frank is able to become a zombie because even though he's, uh, you know, been cured of uh, zombieism as a disease as of Dead Rising 3, um, this is Santa Cabeza old, meaning he can get reinfected because it's a new strain. Or an old strain. What is the original strain be from Santa Cabeza because Nick is from Santa Cabeza and zombified from Santa Cabeza zombies? Yeah, so, so technically... He, yeah. Technically, in this game, I think it is the Santa Cabeza strain. Right, but Nick is from Santa Cabeza. He had zombies and put into him from the original. It's Dead Rising 3, Dead Rising 4 plot. It's very yeah. confusing. <laughs> also, it was asked, why is the game in French? Uh, French is faster as a language. Uh, funny enough, you can try this in many different speedruns. Um, there are language differences per game. Uh, in terms of text, you usually want uh, Asian languages. Um, I think the best is usually simplified Chinese. Uh, a lot of old school retro games are mainly going to have Japanese because, you know, most games either had uh, English or Japanese ports. Um, but weirdly enough as well, there are some cases where Korean can be good for text. Keep in mind, this is normally text. So, with spoken language, it gets a little bit different. Usually, you don't actually want to go with Japanese. A lot of uh, speedrunners assume, oh, Japanese must be fastest. No, that's mainly just for text. For spoken, you actually want to try European languages. Uh, more often than not, you'll find out that uh, French is the fastest language in games. Um, this was uh, definitely um, known from Alien Isolation speedrunning, uh, which, funny enough, for that game, a lot of runners will not play in French, but French is the fastest, even by a small amount. Uh, if you don't like French, you can also try Italian, and sometimes Spanish is also rather fast. Uh, like I know Ghostwire Tokyo, European Spanish is the fastest, um, and then in many games, French ends up being faster. That's all fine. Uh, I saw someone ask, where did I go to? Um, I just went out my way from the main way just to grab a Princess Wasp, 
and we are going through this little back alleyway just to go to this princess wasp. And we're going to essentially work our way around to the school. Uh, but for the moment, we're just going to focus on going around this area now and collecting the princess wasps. Um, I, I, I saw it scroll by, but someone else also asked why, um, what, why the zombies are reacting to Frank still. Um, and that's just because the more princess wasps he gets and because of Blackburn's cure, they recognize him as a person instead of a zombie right now, which is why they're yeah. aggroing on him. That was unfortunate. That reset my combo counter. And considering this uh, combo task, you have to get 300. Not ideal. <laughs> um, I will say as well, and while we're regaining the combo, um, it's, well, one, it's going to be a combination of screams and rams. But for the... <laughs> it, it is. That's uh, you're, you're diving into the dudes, you're doing the dodge, and then you're also screaming. Yeah, that's an accurate sentence, as strange as it sounds. But with Dead Rising 4, the plot's actually not described in a poor way, funny enough. Like, a lot of people assume, oh, Dead Rising 4, bad. No, uh, throughout the game, you end up going in, like, a special machine that uh, for only Frank is in, which is why he gets these special powers. Uh, he's very unique that he's not normally zombified. He was uh, in presence of, like, what's essentially, like, radioactive waste, uh, just as a summary, summary since... I'm not going to fully describe what the zombie machine does, essentially. We all love the zombie machines. <clears throat> yeah, oh, it, it's me. scientific ways of saying Frank West is a special zombie. Hmm. We, um, we kind of backtrack a little bit to this suburban area just because this is the most out of the way Princess Wasp for this area, uh, just before the school. So we're just going to come here, grab the uh, gadgets and destroy them by dashing through them. Because you can hit them, but dashing through them slightly faster, just because you don't stop your momentum. And it's just a little bit more fun, at least in my view. It seems like a one hit go when you dash through two compared to multiple hits by with fisticuffs, if you will. Oh, it is. It's very, very nice. I definitely like the uh, the dash method here. Um, I think like back when this was originally being routed, I just sort of spat on them because I noticed that also did the one-shot kill, but ramming is a lot better here. Oh, for sure. And it also helps that you can dash straight through the fences as well, uh, so you don't actually have to jump over them. Okay. Also, as weird as it sounds, uh, I guess uh, speedrun some the crypt fun, fun part here. I ended up routing the good ending of this game because I realized this DLC is not as bad as people make it sound. Um, and then I want to say it got heavily, uh, not uh, not heavily, but like it got decently rerouted um, by uh, Street Texan and uh, another runner that we mentioned uh, named Zanga. Um, I think in the past year or so, in fact. Yeah. Um, uh, no, absolutely not on my end. I just started learning this run. It's all on Street and Zanga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went hard on this uh, category for quite a while. Uh, mainly bad ending, but most of bad ending routing, uh, <laughs> routing, however you say it. it. It applies to good ending too. Also, this is the worst part of the run. Mainly because these Evo zombies, the good old Rudolph lookalikes, they can one, do that and interrupt your attacks and not die. And two, they can just jump all over the place and make it a nightmare for you to kill them. Like, please stop jumping, sir. I, I mean, you're having a hard time, but it seems like they're at least staying clustered in such a way that you don't have to run around the gymnasium to deal with them. Luckily so. I mean, there is one thing you can do, which is just... Uh, ha stop, stop. I, w I want to grab you, sir. Grabbing them is, yeah, is to kill, so that's uh, way more preferable. Uh, you can you can stun them briefly by roaring, uh, which is quite nice. <laughs> How dare you try and swipe at me, sir. Okay, so now we're at the big bad uh, Evo zombie, the Queen Wasp zombie. This can be a little bit annoying if you don't get him stuck in a corner. So that's what I'm going to try and do, but there's no guarantee it'll work because, as you can see, when you hit them, they tend to go Cameron. all over the place. So I'm just going to try and take my time here. Stop jumping away, please. Thank you. Okay, and with that, we have the Queen Zombie. That is definitely the worst part of the run, in my opinion. Only because... 
it can waste you a lot of time. And there is one other point later in the vineyard, which we will get to shortly, don't worry. Uh, that can lose you a lot of time. But it's a bit more consistent than that school fight, because that school fight is just get good, kill the zombies before they jump around. It, it's very annoying, but at least it's over with. That's the main thing. Also, at this part, we are, again, going out of our way. We could have technically gotten these before the school, but yeah, it's right here. It's right to the left of uh, the school exit. So we'll just get these extra two Princess Wasps. Uh, jump just so I can regain a little bit of stamina. Because if you run out of stamina, you stumble, and that is not fun. Not fun at all. <laughs> oh, bless you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, this is a How many uh, wasps are there? Uh, there's about... I think... 12? No. 10, maybe. Also, we're supposed to follow this guy in, but uh, you can just run through the uh, garage door before it closes and just start wailing on him. <clears throat> also, there's this guy. That axe came out of nowhere. Yeah, that's what we call an exoskeleton uh, soldier. Not fun, but we don't have to worry about him anymore, so we could just run away. Pretend he never existed. <laughs> uh, so this last one, I believe, is a survival one, if my memory is correct. No, this is a pheromones gathering one. I remember now. So this one has a weird sort of way of gathering the pheromones. This one isn't RNG. It's all in a set path, which is kind of nice. Uh, but first we'll just circle around the outside. Uh, circle around the outside of the house, gathering the ones out here, and then we'll head back inside and just gather the ones that are inside the house. All the while trying to avoid those obscure zombies because they are a pain. If they tackle you, not fun. Not fun at all. Yeah, it's something that can happen in the uh, school, but it's just like the normal angry zombies, not the uh, obscurest ones. Yeah, and a little bit later on in the uh, lab, it's, uh, they can annoyingly tell you there, where it's not so much of a big deal because that section is kind of an auto-scroller. But um, if you're right next to one of the things you have to trigger during that section... Okay, these bushes are solid. Thanks, Frank. Um, if you're next to one of the things you have to trigger, uh, then... Unfortunately, they can knock you down and prevent you from triggering it, thus losing you time, even though it's technically an auto-scroller. Fun times. Uh, we are also heading towards Tom's Farm, which is a... I wouldn't say a major set piece in the main story. I think there is three... May Not really. No, two, maybe three times you go there. Uh, but on, on the way, we are going to pick up our final... Princess Wasp for the run. And once we pick this one up, that will enable us to get the true ending, or the good ending, of Frank Rising. And how can you tell if you got the good ending? Oh, at the final uh, final cutscene, it's a bit different. I'll explain when we get there. Um, as well, uh, in case you need like a checklist, you're doing this casually and you have all the time there, uh, the game will kind of give you this, hey, are you sure you want to go here? You don't have everything yet. And that's just be your hint, like, oh, maybe I should look around a little bit more to, before I go to the finale. Yeah, it's, it's pretty lenient, which is quite nice. I'm also going to save my combo for the uh, enemies that are up here, just because they have a fire sword and an ice sword. Which is always fun. So I'll get one of them and then just wail on the other one normally. It looks like I did miss one in the shelter, but that's fine. We go back out the normal way from the shelter anyway. So we can just get him on the way back. Where are you? You to make a really bad Game of Thrones pun. I'll go ahead if you want to. <laughs> I'm going to ask if that battle is a song of fire and ice. Oh... <laughs> you know what? I've just been assaulted with puns ever since the show started. I've been hearing them all since Parasite Eve began. 
Oh, look, there's, you know what? There's I got very one few for times you. I'm able to crack puns. I have <laughs> one for you. Instead Go of a journalist, it. you know what this franchise would be called if Frank West was a baker? What? Enlightenment. Red Rising. I'm going to not jot that, jot that down in my uh, pun notebook later. Thank you very much, Eck. <laughs> no problem. Well, it's because of all that bread he just chokes on during the first game. Have you, uh, the Dead Rising 1 run, you have to look at the way he like throats those baguettes. He really slams them <laughs> down. That's going to be me on Christmas Day, but with deviled eggs. I am, I am ready for them. I get excited for deviled eggs, man. It's the time of year. I'm excited for the pigs in blankets, to be fair. Pigs in blankets are stuffing, best day of Christmas dinner. Let's be honest. I, I appreciate chat booing my, my pun. Thank you. <laughs> also, shout outs to uh, uh, Chris Naga being mentioned during this run for the puns because he kept doing them during the last run. Good. Uh, Good. Let the pun, pun legacy live on forever. It sure has been a wonderful night. <laughs> Thanks. Um, now we've met up with Hammond at Tom's farm. She gives us a little bit of, okay, we're going to escape. Wait, where's Blackburn? And now we're being ambushed by Obscurus. Gee, I wonder who sent them. Blackburn is like the worst throughout this entire game. <sighs> she, she's okay. Like, in a cure for zombieism, she does help. But she is also kind of a pain saying, no, we need to study you first. She only this helps because be you threatened to murder her. Yeah. <laughs> Don't don't oh. take that away from this game, kids. Uh, threatening will not get you everywhere in life. Oh. Okay. okay. So, qu real quick question: I thought they already had a cure for zombieism. They needed that a new already cure. existed. Okay. The, right, the whole plot, right. the way the game forms it, is that this strain of zombieism is a new strain from an old strain because oh, it's Santa Cabeza, so now it's not Willamette; it's different. But I think they forgot that. The original train was Santa Cabeza that led to this, that led to everything. So it's like, oh, I guess it's different, but it's not. But it's different. But it's mm. that's also the problem because the strain's also based on the original zombie outbreak because of the whole plot of Dead Rising One and Three. Uh huh. So it's also, more big just a big shout out. Issue. Oh, sorry. Uh, has that gone off? Please kill them. I. It, it's finicky. It's about to. Yeah. It should. That's a. Uh, Okay, okay. So that strat, there it is. <laughs> that strat was um, found by Zanga and uh, big shout out to Zanga. Very good uh, Frank Rising runner. I love you, Zanga. Please come back and run this again. I miss your presence. But um, get world record. <laughs> yeah, it's that easy. Uh, all we do is we aim at a specific obscure soldier because they're by some vehicles, and as soon as the vomit explodes. As long as they don't move too far away from the vehicles, all of the vehicles around them should explode and kill all of them. Hence, we can just start running back to the barn. Unfortunately, sometimes it doesn't work out that way and sometimes you have to run back to kill them manually. But uh, if you can get it off, it is a fun little just time save, and I'm always appreciative for it. It's uh, it's one of those moments where um, if you if it's uh, it's the moment in the Dark Knight where the Joker is about to blow up the hospital, but it's not blowing up yet, <laughs> and then it explodes. Like that's what doing this strat is like. We're all full of references here tonight, folks. Um. Also, to give you an idea of uh, the time save that Tom's Farm can give you and the wasp screen if you do it right, I was 27 seconds behind. I've got my life split up to, um, just for reference, because I'm a, I, I, I like to stroke my own ego when it comes to my own speedruns. Uh, I was 27 seconds behind uh, coming out of the wasp screen fight. And just from Tom's fight, I've caught up. I am now... Minus zero seconds, so caught up pretty well. Also, ooh, yeah, it's even split. It's and then like you drop the stamina. Yeah. But to be fair, if you do this part well, you can make up some time, maybe? Who knows? Also, we actually have to deal with pyro guys here. Pyro guys are annoying. Uh, you can fast kill them, if you're lucky, by roaring 
and then hitting their tanks. Uh, Frank, no, don't grab me. Yeah, that camera angle and like the way that yeah. he just whips those sh those yeah. swings is frustrating. So, if you manage to get them down and then you tap B, you can, if you're lucky, kill them in one. But sometimes it will take two uh, B actions on the downed pyro. It's very confusing, but uh, it's fine. Also here, vomiting on the Gatling gun guy, mainly because he has an explosive on him and it'll just kill him after a little while, which is quite nice. And we're just going to go around the outside, deal with the obscure soldiers that are scattered around the vineyard. Is, uh, is this way faster than going through the left side? Because I, I noticed that you went right side instead of left. Um, or does it mat not matter? I don't think it matters too much. Um, I just go to the right side out of habit now because I, mm -hmm. I mostly watch Zanga do it and he often did this. I was like, you know what? Let, let's just conform. Let's just make it so it's a uniform uh, the, route for um, everyone. The enemy pathing, or right for the three kills you have to get? Well, uh, uh, for no, 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 so he's going around and getting all the soldiers, right? So, like, um, you can either go left or right. I was just curious as to like which way was faster, but it seems like it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't seem to matter too much, which is quite nice. So, you can pretty much do it at your own leisure. Also, avoid these guys, they will knock you down. And also chomp on the uh, shield guys just to save a little bit of time. Because we don't like dealing with them. You get multiple chomps by doing Princess Wasp? Uh, yes. If you get the Princess Wasp, you do ah. get uh, an extra chomp most of the time, which is quite nice. Uh, it definitely helps in okay. uh, set pieces like this vineyard. I think it depends on your combo, though. I think you have to build it up enough just to actually have two charges. Uh, don't jump into the light, Frank. Thank you. And of course, there are shield guys here, so... Um, chomp, chomp. It's also super helpful because this part will usually drain your health, like, no, tomorrow. What are you doing here? These pyro guys are the worst. Mm. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to say it. I've never seen that happen before. <laughs> Literally knocking him down, going to do the B prompt, and then him just whacking us away. Literally never seen it happen before. That's pretty dumb, but hey oh. Dead Rising 4, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so bad to, like, I know this isn't, I'm not sure if this is considered a marathon run, but you know it's a marathon run when <laughs> that phrase gets said. Hey, I'm just saying, this is the first time I've had on a Dead Rising game that someone else has ran where I'm not surprised at the tech being done. I, I'm so proud of you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I'm doing my best. Also, thank well, God that. The last time it happened, I literally had a record of the game at the time. <laughs> Uh, oh wow, those stairs. I didn't know they existed. I did it! <laughs> okay, unfortunately that wasn't a twofer. Um, and unfortunately, as you can probably see, I'm taking my time to hit him from behind because it, it's very finicky and sometimes it does give you the B-prompt straight away. But um, when the pyros usually get up from the B-prompt, you can hit their tank straight away again and it will often down them if you can get it in the right position. And it's just very nice because then you can immediately just kill them after that. Also, um, I'm probably. Oh, sorry. I was just saying to give you an idea of how much time that can lose you. By the way, I'm now 30 seconds behind on my splits. Oh, I was about to <laughs> just about to hype you up and be like, "Well, I mean, you didn't do terrible with the pyros you had to handle in this section." It, oh, <laughs> 30 seconds behind. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, it it happens though. It happens. Um, does this game just have awful camera controls? It has standard camera yes. controls, uh, but if you're not touching the control stick at all to move the camera and you're attacking, then yes, the camera is awful. <laughs> uh, to be fair though, this game isn't awful on mouse and keyboard. So, 
If you can use a mouse too, then the camera's a little bit better. But um, I'd still recommend controller just for comfort. But that's just me. Every, everyone's feel free to do their own control, uh, control input method. As long as it's comfy for you. That's the main thing. Also, we're now in the auto stroller part, the lab. Well, pseudo auto scroller. We still have to go around and trigger some certain events. Also, there's a floating gun here. Literally not attached to anything. Is that always there? Yeah, that's always there. And if you bump into it, it falls. It's funny. Game good. <laughs> so the first thing we had to do was incubate the queen wasp. And now we're going to synthesize an aerosol. Uh, this is all to cure Frank of his zombies. And so we have to go through the motions. Uh, so it's going to be incubate, aerosol, uh, release the queen wasp, I think. I can't remember the exact steps. Install solenoids. Reroute the power, vent the gas, activate the power, and then enter the chamber. And entering the chamber will be time. That's not for another four or five minutes at this point. Yeah, that checks out. Yeah. So as long as you know where to go and when to go there, this part shouldn't be too awful, but uh, it's also a, a nice little thing just to keep up your combo here. Because if you unfortunately get tackled by any zombies or just hit too much, it can be slightly dangerous. Like as you can see, the feral and the evo zombies are uh, spawning in now. So we're just going to chomp. Instead of fantastic, he should say chomptastic. Oh, for sure. And just, just to have a little bit of relief, it's best to just chomp the uh, Evo zombies and the fresh soldier zombies. Just so they're not as annoying, but it is what it is. If they get you, it's not the worst thing, as long as you're not low on health. Also, that zombie is just a... Uh, oh, I thought they were just frozen. Lamau. I went to the wrong area. <laughs> it, it happens. It's usually either the power or the vent I get mixed up. Just because they're in similar locations and they both have control panels. That, that's literally all it takes for me to get confused on <laughs> placement of triggers. Uh, you can die, sir. And you can also die, Rudolph. On Dancer, on... Prancer, on Donna, on Blitzen, Comet, and Vixen, and the other reindeer I forgot. Rudolph? Keep in. I, I thought I already said Rudolph. I don't know, my memory's going, I'm, I'm getting old. <laughs> Although you're doing, you are going through this section pretty cleanly. Yeah, it, it's kind of a good thing I realized that um, I was in the wrong spot for the power one. Otherwise, that would have just been wasted seconds, but it's fine. We, we don't actually have to be at the power activation thing, which is right over here for a little bit because we're hearing over the radio Hammond and the other survivors trying to escape. Um, they're not doing a decent job at the moment, but they're doing the best they can. Okay, now we activate this. This is the final trigger. And time will be coming up. Time will be coming up when we enter the uh, chamber door, uh, which will open in uh, about 30, 40 seconds, maybe. Oh, Cupid, thank you, so T Torsui. I think I said your name right. <laughs> I knew I was missing a reindeer. So, so this this part is just very chill overall. It's not awful. It's just about health management, making sure you're in the right place. Definitely a lot more use in this area than uh, in the main story in which you come in here, you're told to survive, and you literally stand in this corner, only killing the occasional zombie, and for the most oh, part, I the zombies won't actually bother you. table, and then you just, like, can leave. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty stupid. On the table. 
And time is coming yes. up uh, now. And time. Yeah, there's there's something about Dead Rising games and needing to have like auto scroller sections in it. So, so yeah, Frank has turned back into a human now. He's no longer uh, the zombie man, or in French, le zombie man. <laughs> I I don't know the French for man. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry to any French viewers. Jeez, dude. Ah, ah, uh, thank you very much. Um, and the way to confirm that we had the good ending is if we see this cutscene and all the survivors and Hammond are in the chopper with us, then we've done it. We got all the Princess Ross, we didn't miss anything, it's all good. And there we the go. The only real difference, I think, is just do you escape with Blackburn or do you get like all the people out? They just kind of want to like, oh, hey, remember those characters? Okay, we saved them. See, we, we care a little bit about the characters. And you get a fist bump. That, that's the good ending. Everything Hell else yeah. is the exact same between the two. <laughs> Hammond's obviously a PewDiePie viewer. The, the old PewDiePie viewer. She likes a bro fist. But um, yes, um, the difference is in the bad ending, you do escape with just Blackburn and you're both looking very morose in the helicopter because you, you know your friends are dead. Uh, which is a, a real bummer, so I can understand why. Oh, and also it just kicks you back to the main menu straight after. Which is fair enough. All right, GG. Good run awesome. to be had. Uh, really quick, Street Back Guy, do you have any shout outs that you'd like to give? And as well, if people wanted to check you out, where can they find you? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I, if, you, if you enjoyed that and you like people who stream occasionally, but not all the time because th they work full time and it's, uh, it's annoying, but when they do, it's entertaining sometimes. You can find me on twitch.tv forward slash streetbagguy. And I would also like to give a massive shout out, firstly to Egg for laying the foundation for that run. Uh, Zanga for helping to root bad ending, which in turn helps with good ending. And Tex for commentating with me and just being an overall chill, chill bro, uh, helping keeping me sane during this run. And also the uh, Dead Rising community as a whole. We're very friendly, and if you are interested in learning any Dead Rising game at all, we're very, very happy to help. <laughs> and uh, once again, thank you for having me on. Yeah, it was good stuff. So I do want to say thank you uh, both again for being here and for doing the run. And if you have not uh, checked them out yet, uh, definitely feel free to uh, check out Street Back Guy's channel if you want more Dead Rising based content. Uh, one moment. Uh, one thing. There we go. Alrighty. Anyway, everyone, I do want to say thank you all for watching this episode of Speedruns in the Crypt. Uh, this was the holiday episode, and as well, if you're watching this either now or... Actually, I don't know. I guess this gets up to, uploaded in a couple of days. It might be Christmas by the time you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, anyway, I hope you're all having some happy holidays, whether uh, you're celebrating any of them around the time. Uh, hopefully you have some festive times as a whole. Uh, I have been your host once again, Nick Dysis. Uh, I do a lot of horror games myself, and if you ever want to just, I don't know, check out horror games, or I guess hear more about how the shows get ran, uh, you can find me somewhere down here. It's, I usually talk a lot about how it works. As well, I do love the Christmas season, so it's fun stuff. Uh, we'll be back in about two weeks, right before GDQ. I guess we were like right before GDQ and right after GDQ. I already have a couple of fun shows planned around that time, uh, going into the new year. But yeah, I guess this is our last show of the year. So I just want to say as well, uh, in case I don't see you, have a happy new year as well. Uh, thank you all once again for watching, and I hope that you all have a wonderful rest of the day and or night. So, have a good one. <laughs>